No. <laughs> what is that? Why you gotta play that? That's the Winter Soldier soundtrack. It is. Oh, oh shit. shit! Oh shit! It's about oh, to go down! Shit. <laughs> oh no! It's about to go down! <laughs> He's up top right here on me! Got him! Okay, my shots were not hitting those. Woo, oh, baby! Good. That's two bayonet kills that fight. Go back now. Go back here. Yep, see him. Dead. Good shot. Good. Oh my god. Holy shit. Hello, guys. Hello, hello! Brendan, I just got raided. I have a thousand people watching me right now. Thousand? Yeah. 1200 viewers. Oh my god. Okay, just these two people inside. That is quite significant. Yeah. Oh, he's oh, out there. Is. By door. Where are the. Oh no. Oh, 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 better! Oh, there's, one oh, there's another one! No! I'm worse! No. There you go. Cool 6k damage there. Oh, there we go. go. Fall huh? down, you dumb bitch. <laughs> huh? Eat, dragons! Eat! Eat. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Come here, motherfucker! Oh! Dropped Drop him! <laughs> Holy shit! Someone want to come finish this? Uh, oh shit! One more Veronica kill. coming in! What? 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 No, no. -uh. Yes, -uh. dead ass, dead ass, dead ass. And we're live. We are here. Uh, and again, if you guys want to join for music, I do have music playing on for me. It's just a background music while we chat here at the beginning, but it is on, so it, it's okay. <laughs> Let's see if I can find a better one. It's, it seems more Marvel, you know. Like this one is just oh, multiverse I mean, it's got lo -fi. Spider Man. That's true, it is. Play the, play the song know. from the musical. <laughs> yeah, that won't be distracting at all. Um, all right, so we are going to play the starting adventure for the like full-blown campaign of the cataclysm of kang so this intro is only available if you bought the uh, book through roll 20. it's not available any other way um, but this is basically like the first part of the full adventure that'll come out later this year for the cataclysm of kang which will take characters from level one all the way up to mystic rank level six. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start at level two though, because we get a little bit more of an established character this way. Uh, before we jump into characters and their introductions, I'm going to steal the um, uh, banter question from the session zero of the New Glass Cannon podcast. Uh, because that's what I do, and if I time it right, I'll just keep doing that till I die. Um, hmm. And we, they were talking about, and we just kind of were touching on it here, I think Brendan already knows, they were talking about how alignments are being removed in the updated Pathfinder, and how they didn't necessarily care for them to start with. They thought they were very restrictive and didn't like them anyway, but as like one like kind of last hurrah with them, Matthew went through and kind of gave each person what alignment he thought that they were in real life and decided to talk about it. So I think that would be kind of fun. It's a way to, not really an icebreaker between us because we all know each other very well, but it may be an icebreaker for the uh, all the millions of people that are watching at home. Um, what alignment we think each other are. And I think we just pick someone and then all of us talk about what we think they are. Uh, and I've pulled up a little graphic on my side because I can never remember what they each are because it's never been something that I've looked into very often. Um, but let's start with let's start with Brendan. Like, what do we think Brendan's alignment is? So again, oh, there are, I... it's lawful good, lawful neutral, lawful evil, neutral good, true neutral, neutral evil, chaotic good, chaotic neutral, chaotic evil. 
The way you said that make it seem like you already have an opinion. Did I? I didn't think yeah, I told like you. I have no lawful idea. Good, oh, I have lawful no idea. Neutral, lawful evil. I, I, I have no idea what you are. You look Brendan in the face and tell him they've lawful good, so. The knight follows a strict moral code and always fights evil. Um. Let's see. No, I, I think. I think. Brendan is lawful neutral. Lawful I would neutral. not say he is complete good or evil. I think Brendan is merely good at being himself. Believes so strongly in sure. justice he will carry out any order. Hmm. According to my chart. I think we can all agree that Brendan falls lawful at the very least. I think so, yes. yeah. Yes. And I don't think he's lawful evil. Yeah. I, I think he is on the border between lawful good and neutral good just because there is a little bit Noticness in there. I yeah, I kind of agree with that. He's he's not completely lawful good. Yeah. Like is he is he, he Superman or is he Spider Man? You know. No, he's Captain America. It just d it depends <laughs> on what lawful is. Depends on you know where he is because he's always going to be true to himself. But it depends on the socioeconomic you know <laughs> okay. around him. Okay. Okay. Brennan, what do you think you are? I think you guys are doing a great job. <laughs> do you like just being judged outwardly here? Mm -hmm. You maybe yep. want to give praise to a single person that <laughs> they know you, or do you just want to keep that general? No, no, no. I think you. I think you all did a great job. I think that this uh, topic is dumb, and we shouldn't make people two dimensional. Austin is a bad, bad friend. Wow. Oh, so that's, that's, damn, dude, the one above. You're going to sit here and diss the one above all? Have fun dying, episode one, you fucking idiot. Exactly. <laughs> no, I think we're having fun. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's tough to uh, to put anybody on any type of spectrum, but I definitely think that... Uh, yeah. Hence why they're getting uh, rid of it. Yeah. I think it uh, follows, follows edict, follows uh, a strict code, I think probably does pretty much line it up. It's probably, probably like you said, probably somewhere lawful neutral i mean mainly like because, halfway between good and neutral yeah i think like in D, &D terms good is supposed to be uh like lawful good does it doesn't mean lawful nice others yeah well right so i think good is supposed to be outward and evil is supposed to be inward like the bad guys are lawful they follow a code but they're lawful evil so they do things strictly for themselves and they they take things away from other people so that they can benefit Whereas, like, lawful good would just be like, I always am selfless, and I don't think it's a realistic human personality. A paladin is not a, yeah, a realistic <laughs> not real, not real thing. person. <laughs> okay, okay, I like so, that. Somewhere between there. Let's jump to Justin next. What do we think Justin is? Mm, Justin's harder. Justin is harder. Yeah. I, I started with Brendan because I thought Brendan was easy. You know, very, almost, you could almost call him one-dimensional. Like, really not a lot to him. Ouch. <laughs> this is joke. So hunt. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't think Justin's chaotic. Mm -hmm. I, this I does don't. Sound really I think... silly. I think Justin is as neutral. If you have to, like compound all of him, I think he's as neutral as one could get. <laughs> I, I think really it's more awful. True, true neutral, no, no unaffected by the petty squabbles of the masses. No. I think that's Justin. <laughs> I kind of like, like it. Listen, why did he... Oh my god. I like it. I kind of do. Oh my god. I said Justin, not you, lady. What? <laughs> Who's lady? Oh, Alexa? Oh. Yeah, Alexa. This is like, <laughs> I'm like, Percy's a male, we're all guys. Is there another animal in the house? No, it's her. Okay. <laughs> Like I thought maybe is. someone was no, talking like, shit on the stream or something. Yeah, no, not uh, yet. It's like whenever guys call everyone guy, even yeah. girls. Uh, there's yeah. some girls that call everyone lady, and sometimes it's guys. That's right. Okay. Yeah. It can go both ways. It's okay. That's, that's fair. No, no, no. Yeah. Equal rights and whatnot. Equality. I like true neutral. What do you guys think? Justin, what do you think you are? I, I would say that or potential lawful neutral yeah I yeah, you do skew too. towards yeah you skew towards More lawful. lawful okay but I, i've so seen strong. you go chaotic and i've seen you do evil things at least in <laughs> the realms of 
role video play. Games. Yeah, so. role play. That's yeah. true. That's why I play role play games so that I can. <laughs> you can do the chaotic stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. It's all a projection of who we really are. Ah. Okay. okay. What? What evil things have you seen me do in game? I don't feel like I've done many e evil. You things. guys are all evil when you attacked me, you fucks. I don't think that was evil at all. I, technically, <laughs> I your friends start justice. display. I said, if your friends start displaying signs of being possessed by an evil demon, you do everything you can to exercise uh, it. Uh, it was mm -hmm. just like a symbiote. He was just chilling. Austin, technically, I never attacked you. I was in on the plot right, that, tried. We, that we were going to. He was neutral to it. I was going to be, <laughs> I, and and I never got really to play neutral. out what I may or may not have done uh, in that okay. interaction. All right, all right, all right. Because we ended the game before we did. That's fair. Okay. All right. So yeah, I guess lawful <laughs> neutral. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can see that. Um, let's go with. Sarah next, because I think I know what I want to say for Dylan. And I, let's, let's see what about Sarah here. I think we're all too similar, and some of us at least. Mm -hmm. All Oops. some of us are too similar. I think <laughs> Sarah is our first chaotic. Mm. Ashley but says chaotic good. I was just about to say, I think Sarah's chaotic good. Fights the system to do whatever they think is right. I think Sarah will do what's right regardless of what the rules are. What do we think? Brendan, you're married to her. <laughs> a lawful good and a chaotic pretty good accurate. would neutral out. That's pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. That's true. I think she's pretty good. Aww. <laughs> yeah, I'm just pretty getting good. to know Sarah, so all of this is just good info for me. I think I just... Good for friendship. When I get I would drunk, agree with Sarah chaotic is chaotic. Good. Yeah, I like chaotic good. She she is def she is absolutely chaotic. That part is no doubt. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's think you're chaotic and neutral. Good or neutral. And I don't think you're evil. So I think chaotic good makes the most sense. Are you here, Sarah? What do you got? You got thoughts, I, I, opinions? I'm just taking just taking it all in. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. I think you guys are giving me too much credit for the, the goodness in my heart. Um, you I save I like pets chaotic. for a living. You're, yeah, That's you're like a good. you're a you're a doctor. Your job is literally to like save lives, you know. The, the Hippocratic oath and whatnot. The, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess if you're taking the oath into consideration, I can see that. But. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but I also work it, in nonprofit housing. That's true. Exactly. <laughs> is, yeah. Is the vets equivalent? Is the, is it called the Hippocratic oath or is it something different <laughs> it's, for vets? It's the Hippocratic oath. Uh, oh wait, no, there's uh, a dump. That's a good one. Somewhere, where is it at? <laughs> I can do it. I gotta find it. I don't have it on my soundboard. Come on! Ah, there there it is. Yes, it's the same oath. Nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving to Dylan. I gotta go. Man, I wait, don't know. Let, let it's... others talk first. You yeah. obviously know what you want to say. Yeah. Well, I've got. I've got like kind of an L shaped thing that I'm going kind of like an a L corner, shape? like a corner of the of the graph, you know, the three by three. I've kind of got like a corner on my end. What do you guys think? I'll Let's... also start by saying, yes, Dylan and I are just not getting to know each other. But my first Same. impressions are that he's neutral good. Oh, no. Maybe. <laughs> my, 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 my exposure has been pretty limited, so I would also say neutral good on this. Really? Yeah, wow. why are you so mad about neutral good? You hide it really well, Dylan. <laughs> That's the key. I mean, yeah, considering yeah. my interactions have been gameplay, which yeah. can be literally anything. That's true. It's hard and to tell when your like, only interaction is people playing whatever character they want. And 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 like what well, I, I know we had we hung out at your birthday and uh -huh. I felt like there was one other time that I'm drawing a blank on, but maybe not. It may have just been it your was, birthday. Both times were in No, both times were in Manhattan. Yeah, um, you might have been out for like two birthdays or something or Yeah, uh, may, good, that, something maybe like that's that. what it was. Yeah. My Evidence is Percy seems drawn to Dylan, and that is which is wild because Dylan is the inverse of a dog person. He was oh, so no, terrified of my. I, 
He was so scared of my dog growing up. It was wild. Yeah. I mean, we did have like eight of them, so. Sorry. I was going to say, the way that you describe your dogs, I think anybody would have been afraid of them. Nah, nah, purchase. they were good. Most of them were good. There was yeah, one that right. wasn't. That one was annoying. Yeah, it's the outline. He's like, oh, was. there's this sweet man just smiling and wanting this to pet me once. <laughs> smiling and, and let me move on my day. Scheming. I would go anywhere between chaotic neutral, chaotic evil, or neutral evil. Mm. I would say chaotic neutral. I think I think Dylan tends to he's got a squirrely streak in him, and if you can get it to show <laughs> itself, then he, the neutral uh, part. Yeah, yeah. That's All right. Fair. Probably not chaotic evil, although sometimes you're chaotic evil, which is I, I have tendencies yeah. towards. The, the, yes, in my picture, as, in my picture <laughs> of like different characters that they are, chaotic neutral is Jack Sparrow, chaotic evil mm -hmm. is the Joker, and neutral yeah. evil is Voldemort. So like you are like that's see, like, there's quite a bit of a difference between those three characters. There is, yeah, 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 but they're all they're adjacent to each other, kind of. So, mm -hmm. um, but no, yeah. I lean more towards Jack Sparrow than I do Voldemort. I'd say. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, chaotic neutral is probably pretty good. All right, and you guys have to talk about me, so you don't have to, but we could just go on. Uh, which one is it that's uh, completely self-centered and only <laughs> interested in oneself and not the others? I'm not well, sure. That yeah. might be... Uh, Austin is lawful evil. Best. You're right. A lawful okay, evil. Power right. above all else. He uses the law mm -hmm. to maintain control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> maintain Sorry, the we're... status quo. We're doing. We're doing Austin yeah, well, now. Yeah, we're on. Darth we're on to Vader Austin now. Austin. Austin. Darth Vader. Is definitely Austin. Ashley says chaotic evil. Really? <laughs> wow, that's not probably true. What was it? I like the energy though. Oh, sorry. Neutral evil. Neutral evil. Yeah. I'm sorry. Austin's not chaotic. That's fair. Neutral evil. What was that? Neutral evil. See, if you disagree with me that Dylan is neutral good, then I feel like Pers you have to be neutral good. Pursues evil at all costs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't seem quite right. I feel like I definitely lean. Like I hate breaking pretty much any laws, like real laws, like rules. Like I'm very much a, a, a good, a goody two shoe, uh, uh, lawful kid. But I don't know. I don't know. I would say lawful neutral, or uh, uh, neutral good. Sorry, neutral good. Neutral good. Yeah. 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 And all reactions. Spider Man? I guess you can consider it lawful and neutral if you go off of the certain certain charts, but. Yeah, yeah right? Okay. It depends on where you are. Okay. Depends on the situation. All right. I can get behind that. Well, good stuff. Now we all know each other in and out. We can all look up some pictures afterwards of different superheroes that align with, with uh, your different thing, and that's the character you have to play now. Sorry. This page uses chaotic good as an example of Mary Poppins. I just don't feel like I align with Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> you don't? But it's because I feel like Mary Poppins has like How a it's kind of like it's kind of like fake outwardly, but like it, deep inside she's chaotic, you know? Yeah, no, she is chaotic because she's yeah. mischievous. Yeah. She has like whimsy in her eyes and yeah. is like I don't know. She's not normal. I feel like you're more so outwardly chaotic. Umbrella. She does. Mary Poppins, y'all. So whenever I, I, I do the, an image search for D&D &D alignments Marvel, uh -huh. I have Hawkeye, for true neutral, I have Hawkeye, mm -hmm. Groot, and Vision. Hmm. Yeah. Vision? Those, yeah, Vision is the definition of true neutral. He is just... He must be. Uh, yeah, just no. Yeah. Just robots, you know? It's only logical. Exactly. Cool. You like that? That was good, Brendan. Yeah, that was my vision voice. I liked that. No, that was. <laughs> Wait, that wasn't a sound bite? Yeah. No. That's... Now I need to. Look... Now I need to look up the Star Wars one. Oh, Star Wars. Good. Interesting. True neutral on two of these are Kaminoans. Okay. Yeah, hmm. I can see that. For and another part. one is. And another one is Boba Fett. Okay. Granted, they have they have uh, Boba Fett Boba from Fett. I, no, it's Boba Fett from I think Rise of the 
uh, Return of the Jedi. It's like Rise of Skywalker. Where was Poe? I gotta yeah. rewatch. I know. That. I, I, yeah. <laughs> too many, too many ROs. Yeah, I feel that. This one has. Oh, that's just the different stages of Anakin. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> it's hard Hold to on. put a, a put a finger on that one. I, I got I gotta share this. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, my tricks don't work on me. Only money. Ah, oh, so bad. Can't, <laughs> can't do that. So what was I? I was. You guys said lawful neutral. Oh yeah. C three PO. Mm -hmm. I yeah. said neutral good. I want that to be clear. I you said told neutral. Me, good. You think I'm Luke? All right. I don't. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Definitely, yeah, I don't know. When I look at Marvel examples for chaotic good Star-Lord is used, I can kind of see that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Neutral sure evil as Dylan as Jabba? Neutral. Yeah, that I think that follows. Jabba? <laughs> I, think, I think you could be a good Jabba, Dylan. You'd make a good yeah, like, Prime Lord. Same. Oh, neutral. Oh, evil's here. Although, I don't think I'm ever <laughs> neutrally evil. If I'm ever being evil, evil, I'm doing it chaotically. <laughs> that could be true. Austin. This Ashley still says neutral evil for you. <laughs> that's cool. Like I'm like got like giga power, you know, but like I don't know if that's a lawful neutral. Man, I don't want to be a fucking stormtrooper. You guys <laughs> think Rocket is true neutral? Hmm. No. This page Austin, wrong. I don't I, I disagree. If, yeah, if... Austin Ashley did say that you could be lawful neutral because you have terrible aim like a stormtrooper. Wow, hmm. what do you know about my aim? I Although stormtroopers do have good aim, it's no, just it's because of the force that they miss all the good uh, guys. Okay, maybe. All right, I'm going to cut our our conversation here, and we're gonna jump on in into some Marvel multiverse role-playing game. I hear, I hear stuff. Um, Another one was lawful neutral Jar Jar Binks. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yep. Very I'll nice. take that. Um, all right. So let's start off with some character introductions. Feel free to explain who your character is. If you want to share anything about their history or their powers or anything like that certainly feel free to do so or if you'd rather hold on to that and keep some things a surprise that works too um but you should be seeing the character art for all of the different characters here on this main page and you can zoom in on those as much as you want um but we'll get started according to my overlay uh, we actually start with sarah as the water bear with a, another secret name, but we'll keep that one secret for now. <laughs> we typed up my stuff. Where is it at? Is that the roll 20? Oh, I don't know where you guys put it. Did you put it on your character sheet? Did you guys put that on your character I, sheet? I thought Brennan did. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, this isn't your character. Let's see. Let me see if I... Yeah, okay, so you can go, if you go to your the third tab on, in the top right, click on it, and then click on your character, you should be able to see your stats and stuff. Yeah. And then underneath the picture, there's a little button that says role play. If you click on that, and the bottom right in history is your history, so you can oh, cool. read some or all of that if you want. It's up to you. Yeah, I don't know if you want to hear all this, but um, in a hidden laboratory deep within the heart of a cutting edge research facility, a groundbreaking experiment was underway. Dr. Lily Carter, a brilliant scientist specializing in microorganisms, was on the brink of a remarkable discovery. She had been working tirelessly on a project that aimed to enhance the resilience of tardigrades, those microscopic creatures known for their incredible survival abilities. One fateful day, an unexpected accident occurred during an experiment. A massive power surge caused a volatile reaction in the tardigrade chamber. Dr. Carter, in a heroic act of self-sacrifice, exposed herself to the energy wave to protect her colleagues. The blast mm -hmm. merged to conscious. To, for, oh, excuse me. The blast merged her consciousness with that of the tardigrades. Dr. Carter was transformed into the water bear, a being with the microscopic tough 
toughness of a tardigrade and the added ability to control water and communicate telepathically with all aquatic life forms. Wow. Hell yeah. Welcome, Water Bear. Love it. Uh, next up on my off. list is uh, Dylan playing Red Mist. You want to share anything about your character? Feel mm. free to do so. Okay. Um, I'll just tell you. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll tell you. I don't know how much I want to tell you guys. I'll tell you what um, you do, kind of where you're at now, maybe that sort okay. of thing. So... My character is the Red Mist. Uh, you'd know him as his, uh, as the guy who uh, reeks of iron and blood. Uh, and that is because uh, when he teleports, he is uh, ripped apart, ripped asunder into a, a red mist and then is uh, reformed uh, elsewhere. And That's it hurts hardcore. every time. Uh, and so that's that's kind of what you know about him as the Red Mist. Um, what you may not know is his name is actually Julian Driveway, and he is a, a court court ordered uh, 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 attorney. And uh, he's not, he's not, he doesn't have his own practice or anything. He literally works with the city, and is the <laughs> the lawyer that you or I guess he's a defense attorney. He, uh, he's the public defender. Uh, public defender. That's the word. He's the one that's issued you, issued to you, if you don't have money for for a real one. <laughs> and uh, he's uh, he's a little slow in the head, uh, but his heart is very much in the right right spot. Um, at least from from his own perspective. Hell yeah, awesome. Uh, next up on my overlay is Justin with the Craftsman. Or just craftsman, right, not so, the. Wait, just, just craftsman. Craftsman, just, okay. just craftsman. Just craftsman. Okay, got it. I want to say the, but I will find it. Not like the I old mean, garden. Just all I mean, garden. you, you, you can. It's not like I'm gonna be offended or anything. It's just. All right. His, his name is just craftsman. Got it. That works. Um. So yeah. Uh. Craftsman is a. a he's an eternal. Uh. He came with the uh ones that we saw in the movie um but he was always kind of in the background of of things because he uh was kind of the understudy to fastus the guy who's you know the engineer guy um because he was starting to um eat what was it called again the uh, uh, uh th mad wiry yeah, there you go, the Mad Wiry. Um, uh, Fastos was was experiencing the early signs of that, so I was there to step in whenever he kind of lost it. Um, and uh, whenever the Eternals kind of went their separate ways, um, Craftsman went and uh, just kind of went from university to university to try to guide technology in a responsible way um and uh yeah very cool love it and last but not least is the i'm sorry i keep saying this word wrong karn karen karen magician karen magician being played by brendan uh yeah so it's, it's that's a street name um and uh, Na and nasser is his uh is his real name um and he is quite old um not quite maybe as old <laughs> as the eternal in our group but he is he has been around since the times of ancient egypt um but he is a he's a magician mm. he's a, a spellcaster one trained in the mystic arts um and and a long time ago um in a land quite far away, he was he was <laughs> greeted by a visitor from space that's kind of latched onto him and kind of <laughs> uh, become become part of him for all these years. So uh, so while he was quite a respected uh, magician back in his day in the land of ancient Egypt, he was uh, it discovered 
we'll say a sneaking brains out of some canopic jars in the in the undercroft in in the pyramids um and the people sealed him away in a sarcophagus like like enchanted sarcophagus um to try and keep him away from, for, you know to keep the, to keep the people safe um and he stayed like that for a very very long time and has kind of like years and years ago he's, he, he got out you know like eventually somebody exhumed that tomb and somebody who didn't know it better broke open that seal um so he's been kind of trying to find his way and, and integrate into modern society um but yeah he's got a bit of a a bit of an alter ego that uh can, get, can be quite angry and quite hungry sometimes so uh he's got to kind of deal with those two things like they're very opposite ends of the spectrum so it'll be fun to see how he does how he deals with that. Yeah, good luck, buddy. <laughs> I already have a plan of how to use that. <laughs> well, shoot, everyone kind of gave, like, said their thing. I kind of want to just read my thing. You guys allow me just to take the floor for a second? Yeah. yeah. Try Permission granted. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, Julian dri Driveway was ripped apart by savage and malicious mad scientists at the age of eight. They kidnapped him right outside his mother's trailer park, dragging her screaming body behind their van as they make their escape. Once at their lab, Julian is stretched out on their makeshift table. His skull was then opened up and implemented with a device inside his brain. This allowed him the ability to read minds. However, in doing so, Julian was severely brain damaged, though this traumatic event did unlock his mutant abilities and allowed him to escape his kidnapper's makeshift lab by teleporting away, leaving behind nothing but a red mist. Uh, now, 20 years later, Julian works as a court-appointed lawyer uh, in whatever city that will have him. Uh, after the incident, Juli Julian lost uh, most of his memories uh, and had been living in the foster system his entire childhood, with no memory of his slain mother. Though his mind is lacking, his spirit is indomitable. Julian will do whatever he can to help those in need, having brought up, having been brought up in nothing. With his mind and moral skewed, Julian will eventually will even utilize his telepathic abilities to read the minds of criminals, fellow lawyers, and even judges. Julian does not stay in one place for very long. And by night, the red mist prowls the city, serving every injustice in his wake, letting nothing, even his own well-being or moral character, get in the way of true justice. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. See, when you're like ripped apart and dragged behind a trailer or whatever, I'm like, yep, chaotic evil. Like that's uh <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. That's cool. the character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I know. A, I know. Tragic backstory. Yeah, it is tragic backstory. As soon as he said my neighbor's backstory. lab, I had an idea. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So, with that being said, there's a couple ways I can start this adventure, but really, the first thing we kind of have to talk about is: Do you guys know each other? Have you already worked together and on a team, or do you guys kind of picture yourselves all being strangers coming together here? Uh, we can go either way. You guys want to? We're 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 gonna start this story, and you guessed it, New York. So if that kind of helps, if you guys think that your character would be in New York or be by themselves or whatever, we can certainly uh, kind of talk a little bit about your guys' backstories together. I feel like my character would probably have had at least some run-ins with. Uh, Brendan, it's the Cairn Magician. Yep. I feel like I probably would have, since, since like the Eternals kind of went around to the different uh, kind of beds of civilization. Yeah. I mean, like, do you think you knew him yeah. back in the day, like back in ancient Egypt? Mm -hmm. That's fucking. That would dope. be that would be what I guess. Uh, maybe even before uh, my visitor came. Yeah. When he was just I... Nassor, and he was like a. I mean, there's a lot more to him than, than what I said, but like when he was yeah. just Nasser, he I, was... I may not have known him with with the, you know, after his change, but I probably knew him as Nasser. Um, and and it, it may have even been something where 
the Eternals thought he was also an Eternal. And so it was like, hey, we need to go scope this thing out. It might be one of us or, you know, something yeah, like that. Yeah, the magic and shit going on, maybe. Um, like, that, that has to be an Eternal. That's cool. Um, what about, what about you guys? So you guys haven't seen each other in, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, potentially. What about the rest of you? you guys think you would have any interaction with each other? Any sort of history here? I don't think I've known any of them before, but I do think I was growing in the soil near the trailer park that Red hmm. Mist grew up in. Ah. I've, I, I've, I've seen him before. Okay. I like it. I don't know much about his work. Yeah, I'd never stay in one place for long, but if you do get a glimpse of me, it's hard to forget about it. <laughs> it smells bad. I'm sure the same I'm sure the same goes for for the, the Tardage. <laughs> once, once you see a giant walking Tardage, it's, it's a bit hard to, to scrub that one out of the old memory banks. Very cool. True. But I also think I don't know. I, I would not be a part of a team, I would not imagine. Okay. Like pre existing. Are you, I imagine you as a lawyer in New York, maybe even some run-ins with like uh, old Matt Murdock, maybe? Yeah, yeah. He's like one of those lawyers that I looked up to as like a real lawyer. Okay. Do you think you know his secret identity? Uh, no, I'm not I'm not intelligent in the slightest. Not smart enough? I okay, cool. Nope. But you know of him? All right, sick. So you, you're kind of working in New York. Um, are the rest of you, where do you guys think your characters kind of hang out? It could be anywhere. Like, are you still think, just chilling in Egypt, or have you come to New York to do something? Or kind of, I guess a better question is, what are your guys' characters' occupations? Like, what do you what do you do when you're not superheroing? Like, we know Dylan's a, a lawyer. Um, I think so I, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think I probably would have been. So there's probably a couple of places that I would have ended up um, when they ex excavated the. The Great Pyramid. Um, so but, but probably either like uh, like the British Museum or end up like the Smithsonian or something, you know, like in, in London. So I think, or, I'm sorry, in, mm -hmm. in New York. So eventually I probably would have made my way to New York. Um, and then I think I'm probably like trying to find work as a professor of like Egyptology or something like that. <laughs> cool. Yep. That makes but, sense. Uh, some of the, Do what you're good at. Some of that, <laughs> you have knowledge to use. It's always good to be able to say, no, nah, that's actually not what happened. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be a curator? Mm. Ah, it could be. I think there's already a, a guy working at that museum. Oh, He's got yeah. a, an interesting backstory, so I'll let him be. Oh, yeah, man, I'm what sure a fucking... Even if that, that opens knows up. Of you. Oh, so cool. Ah, oh, God. There's so many stories to do that aren't this one, too. It's crazy. <laughs> um... What about you, craftsman? What do you think that you, what is what is your character? What is their profession? What are they what are they doing when um, they're not fighting evil? He, he is an engineer by trade. Um, I I like to think that he works for universities. Like he bounces around so that he could kind of okay. You know, it's not too it it, it, it he you know can have a new identity with each new place type of thing. Um, rather than, you know, working at a firm or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, maybe working at, like, NYU or something like that as a as a professor. Absolutely. Nice. And last, what about you, Water Bear? You kind of... Everyone else can <laughs> sort of blend in, but you're a, a giant tardigrade, <laughs> so it's kind of kind of tough. What do you think... What is, uh, what is your character doing? Yeah, I think I do... Ever since the the accident, a lot of remote privatized research went more, more off the grid. Remote. Um, I like it. Your camera's never working. Yeah. You never yeah. have to talk. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll just send in data points than anything else and then re write research papers. But okay. um, yeah. And then I also just memory blip anybody that does, I do come across. But uh, where cool. I end up, I think it's mainly based on weather patterns. Okay. Erosion sort of. Or waterfalls. So. Sick. Erosion and waterfalls. <laughs> Don't go chasing waterfalls. Exactly. Just stick to the rivers oh, so, and the So other there is a reality where uh, we used to know about each other, but then you got to know me a bit more and you just made me forget about you. Maybe. Like we might have. Maybe. Like you know me. Maybe some logic checks involved. Ooh. And I'm not good at those. <laughs> and I think uh, Water Bear is. <laughs> 
All right, so let's get started here. So I'm just going to read a little bit from this hook here. So you guys all, you're not really working together already as a team, but you all get a message, whether that's, a, you know, you all get it in various ways, depending on your current profession and kind of your whereabouts. Um, but it's from uh, the one and only Nick Fury. Um, so a little bit of a backstory here. So you guys would know at this era, S.H.I.E.L.D. has actually been dissolved after it was revealed that Hydra had absorbed it from within. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're curious about that, that's part of the Secret Empire uh, a series of comics. And uh, but knowing Nick Fury, you know, he's not going to simply fade away. Um, so he's still making use of information taken from S.H.I.E.L.D.'s database databases and kind of has his own spycraft thing going. Uh, but he, he still does his best to save the world, but it's more on a, on a freelance kind of basis. Um, but you know right now that Fury has too many troubles on his docket to be able to investigate each one of them personally. Uh, so he tries to focus on the biggest problems, you know, things like that it might involve like the Infinity Stones. And then he kind of delegates smaller issues to other people that he hopes he can trust. And that's where you guys come in. So Fury has reached out to you to ask you um, to work together as a team to help him with a problem that's cropped up in Little Italy here in New York. Um, so according to his sources, someone has been purchasing up a bunch of different properties in a particular block um, one by one and kind of leaning hard on a few people who refuse to sell. Uh, right now, he really doesn't have time to help the people on, the, on that block right now, but he really hopes that you guys are able to manage that without him. Uh, the most recent incident of this actually came came to a head with the arson of a restaurant uh, that burned out the interior of the building down to its studs uh, with dozens of people being displaced. Um, and then he says, with a little bit of luck, it should be a simple matter of going down to the block, figuring out who's hurting folks down there and putting a stop to it. Uh, but he does recognize that it might not be that easy. Um, the way this message is set up is you're able to kind of almost text him back or message him back with any sort of questions that you might have about what's what's going on. Um, but he gives you a location and uh, of that that restaurant and says, you know, uh, let me know if you need anything and we'll we'll go from here. What happens if we ghost Nick Fury? Ooh, I think we've seen that. <laughs> you don't you don't <laughs> ghost Nick Fury. Yeah, he will find you. Um, but I, I suppose you could. You just would not get to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you said we're we don't know each other at this point. Yep, I think so. Well, based on that, maybe you guys, like, some of you, know of each other. But you all get this yeah. message. So individually, um, you don't know each other yet. I assume you guys will end up meeting around the same location, uh, maybe beforehand. Uh, but if any of you have any individual questions that you think that you would reach out back to Fury with, we can go over those first, and then. Uh, uh, I can put you guys together in the same area to kind of introduce and talk to each other for the first time here. Um, and if you don't have any questions, if you think that Fury's giving you enough info to run with, that works. Mm. Nah, I shoot him the five W's. Who, what, when, where, and why? Who? Yeah. So again, it's a, it's a block of one-by-one one restaurants. Um, the, the owner of the restaurant that had their place uh, burned down... Um, his name is, give me one second, his last name is, they're all Italian, uh, da, da, da. Why is that uh, yeah, well, it's, Ita it's an Italian way, name, way. no, 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 it's an, it's, it's an Italian restaurant, it's, uh, the name of the restaurant is, uh, Nanny's, N-A-N-N-I, how would you guys say that, Nanny? I wouldn't say Nani, Nani because it's Italian, but maybe that's still an Italian thing. <laughs> Could be a nickname for a grandma. Yeah, uh, but the the owner is Giovanni de uh, 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 Batista Ignelis is his name. Giovanni de Batista Ignelis is the who that you guys are going to go talk to. Um, who, what? Again, it was an arson, but a lot of the buildings are being blocked up in the area. Who, what, when? Just recently, within this week, even the the building burned down yesterday. When, where? Again. I got you, and why? That's kind of why you're here. So, anybody else think you have any have questions? Any... That's fine. I I can't. I don't think I can't think of any questions. No. 
Man, I just wish I understood. What what does Nick Fury sound like? Yep. Nope. I knew you. <laughs> That's why he texted you. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Say what again? All right. What? So no, what? This is Ultimate Alliance, uh, Nick Fury. Yeah. Uh, it, it it is that. It's they actually in this universe it's Nick Fury Jr. But it's the Nick Fury that we know. But there's just a more of a backstory with his dad used to run it back in the. And in the, the day too, but it's it's the same Nick Fury that we are aware of. So cool, yeah. If you guys don't have any other other questions, we can jump jump on down. Wait a minute. Uh, did he say he was gonna pay us, or what, what? What's our motivation here for helping this guy? He just knows that I you mean, guys are Nicholas Fury. our heroes, and that uh, if you need some some work and and you know that you're helping people, I think that's the the main thing here. Superheroes don't generally get paid; they are they aren't the wealthiest of people. They get paid on goodwill. But he says that you really don't have any authority here. Like he doesn't have any authority. You guys don't have any authority. It's just uh, you guys are just concerned citizens. Uh, like most of the superheroes that run around New York. Um, you want to help, but you're not the police. Uh, and he said, you might even try to avoid the police. Because uh, you don't want to get arrested, so. Yeah, and you don't want to get caught up in the system. Fuck, it sucks. Exactly. <laughs> Place is a mess. Yeah, I, I'm helping no matter what. Cool. Yep. Just, I send a, a gif of a, of a kid giving a thumbs up back to Nick, Nick Fury. Okay. I'll try to find a set of Italian music to play here in the background. <laughs> yes, Italian please do. Music. Exactly what we need. <laughs> it's actually incredible. Water Bear just repeats the image that Red Mist produced. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so you guys start making your way towards Little Italy, and, and Nick Fury kind of gave you a, a point to meet up yet, which is just south a few blocks of where this incident happened. And you guys, it's kind of, it's getting a little bit later in the evening, so uh, the city's kind of dying down just a little bit. You guys kind of all end up um, together. Um, you might not know each other, but uh, a hero can recognize a hero when they see them. Um, so let me know kind of how that interaction works. Maybe who's the who's the first one to get there? You know, who's the who's the first to walk into the tavern, as uh, you might say. But uh, here you guys are kind of meeting for the first time. I don't necessarily have a, a map for you quite yet. I could, but... Um... Actually, yeah, I can give you on a, I can I can give you a map here. Give me one second while I do that. I already have my entrance ready, but I can't be the first one. Who do you think gets there first? Who's the most punctual out of you guys? Who is there and ready to go? Water I'm guessing a Red back. Mist, but... I think Red Mist can definitely I, I guess... get there the fastest. Question, Red is Red Mist's teleportation similar to... Nightcrawler in that you have to either see where you're going or know the place? Um, I have to know the place and be within a certain amount of and space. Within... Cool, so you couldn't just, like, go from California over to New York. You'd yeah, have to... you... I would gotcha. have to be one rank higher to get that one. Cool. Yeah. So maybe one That's day. Teleportation two. Yeah, maybe. I'm working up to it. It hurts a lot when I do it, so I try not to push myself. I, I think of the scene... It's, I don't remember which X-Men movie it is, but isn't there one where he, they're just like, does it hurt? And he's like, every time. I'm talking about pulling out his oh, claws. Wolverine. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. it in Wolverine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, it's the original. It's in I think it's the original X-Men. Yeah. Is it? Okay. I'm pretty sure it's the first one where he's talking to Rogue. Yeah. Yeah. That could be. Yeah. Rogue, ask, uh, Rogue asks him. and. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. When they like yeah, first like meet, does it hurt? Means. Every time. Every time. All right. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a map here in a second. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, just uh, as a little insight, Red Mist does have a uh, healing factor, and that nice. kind of cuts into his mul his uh, his mutation because it's like he is getting ripped apart when he teleports and then put back together, and so that sort of getting put back together kind of lends itself to a to a healing factor. 
Sick. All right. Um, if I drag you guys to this map, let's see. Can you guys just see the street? Should be in like the bottom right area of the map. You should be able to see the street and then your individual characters. Don't know if there's a, it's down here on the bottom right. I don't know if there's right a way. Now, that's okay, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there it is. It. Okay. Make sure real quick that you guys can each move your individual characters. Yep. And Brendan, again, on your guy, you can right-click him, click multi-sided, click choose side, and then flip there. We're just on the street. Yep, so you guys know that you're, you're going to be heading down the street a little ways um, to go to... Uh, uh, Nanny's, which is the, the Italian restaurant that sits on the western side of Mulberry Street, right here in the heart of Little Italy. Are um, we supposed to be seeing a map? Yeah, you should. What do you see? A black uh, look at the uh, go right. Zoom out and look at the... It's on the right side of the map. If you scroll wheel out. Oh, I see. Yeah, you should be down here, and you should see your character. The zooming is kind of weird on yes, Roll20 because yes. it doesn't center, but make sure you can move your character. You should be able to grab them and move them around. How does one grab? I uh, just click yeah, on them. Okay. You see I your got guy. nothing. You can't move yours? No, do I have to press control or something? Uh, oh, wait, no, it doesn't. I don't know why you don't have control. Give me a sec. Save. Okay, try now, Dylan. I don't think I you don't guys know. were in here yet, so I couldn't give it to you. Yeah, I got it now. Cool. All right, sick. All right, so yeah, you guys meet up here. Kind of how does that interaction go down? Who who gets here first? What do you guys say to each other? Or do you just like, time to go? And just go down, kind of ignoring each other. Like, do you poof in? Does does uh, is there some magic coming in? Is it a... Uh, or is you you kind of red mist in, or what is what does this what does this look like? I mean, you guys are a, a brand uh, new team meeting for the first time. You all look very unique. I'm sure there'd be some sort of questions or something going on here. I think Water yes. Bear is still a little untrusting, so he just kind of gives him like a blank stare. It just floats up into the air and just starts floating away without saying anything at all. Okay. And how big is Water Bear again? Like, what should we picture? Be pick. What should we be picturing size-wise? Um, good question. I'd say probably two to three hundred pounds. Okay. Big. Can we not like take our character sheets like outside the window of Roll Twenty? Like it's. Just Nope. Yeah. So it's just within roll twenty. I think you might be able to open up another tab and have them there, or potentially screenshot it. But nope. Yeah, there's uh... purple in the top left corner of that little window. It'll open up its own browser window that you can like minimize and stuff like that. Oh yeah, top oh, okay. left. Look at That's that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. sick. Good shit, boys. Good one. Or good shit by both boys. I mean Justin. Good shit. Just Justin. Did know Justin that. did that. Did all of that. <laughs> that was perfect. Thanks. Sick. Good. Very cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, Red Mist does eventually, uh, fucking just right next to y'all, and y'all get sprayed in the face. <laughs> um, it's very unpleasant, it smells terrible. Um, but no, he's he's not used to being punctual, because he works alone and does, doesn't have to commute anywhere, so he can just, you know. So he's not very good at that. I mean, makes sense. Yeah. But, so he's right there. Cool. Magician, you just walk here. Took a took a taxi. Karen, magician, Nassor, how do you think you're? How how did you show up? Oh, I'm sorry. I was reading. Um, you're, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So I don't have any teleportation magic. So I do think I'm probably coming via uh, maybe. Maybe town car or something here in New York, something a little classier. Um, not necessarily a taxi, but uh, I'm gonna get a driver or somebody that drops me off. But um, 
Yeah, do you think oh, that, uh... I didn't realize you had money like that. All right. Well, mm -hmm. well you know. Mission. All right, well, let me see you. They do bury you with a whole bunch of I think of I was going to say, I was going <laughs> to say, when you, when you, when you, uh, when someone opens your sarcophagus and you wake up, uh, generally you get to keep the stuff that's inside of it and not, uh, <laughs> I guess. Give it away. I thought you were kind of buried, uh, <laughs> less, like, uh, ceremoniously and more like, uh, we got to yeah, fucking that's keep this guy true. out, that's you know? True. You probably didn't get buried with a lot of riches. You got... Buried with uh, no, I imagine you started a cult before you were before you were. Yeah, uh, that's right. You Could be. Yeah. They've been waiting for me. Yeah, that's cool. You got a following. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, you can do a lot of stuff when you're a magician in today's day and age. Like I feel like Doctor Strange could make himself seem as rich as he wanted to. That's true. Um, that's true. So, but so you do live in a world where there's crazy. lots of magic and stuff. There may be, you know, yeah. banks may have an in on that that sort of thing. All right, I like it. I like it. You say anything to anybody else, or acknowledge but, anyone, uh, or just kind of go? I do, I do think I do think uh, he's going to be a little miffed, maybe at, at just being called, you know, into action by this Nicholas Fury guy. <laughs> he's just, he, you know, he's, I think he's going to be a little annoyed that that happens, and he's going to look the team that's assembled here kind of up and down, and say, he's just say, you know, like. Something along the lines of like, well, we better just get this over with or something, you know, and he kind of like cracks his knuckles and then he gets some like uh, some sparks going kind of like uh, like Doctor Strange normally does when he's doing magic and stuff. Like he's got some symbols and stuff floating around, but all of his kind of seem like uh, an older kind of magic. Like he's ah, it's not uh, like it's, so it's not just like it's not like symbols and stuff. It's like it's act actual like hieroglyphs like floating off of his body and stuff. He's got like tattoos. Like, do you light have, like, spell components? Do you have, like, uh, like I don't know if magic? No. Yeah, I don't know if he's got spell components necessarily, but he does, oh. like, he does have, like, it's, like, hieroglyphs, like, on, tattooed onto his body that, like, light up and, like, then float uh. off of his body and, like, mm. stuff like so that. Cool. And his eyes kind of glow with power. I have a question. Does you, as, as if we are watching, like, Venom or something, we kind of have, like, that internal monologue as a... Uh... Are you hearing a voice in your head talking? Kind there, of may be, they... there may be a conversation going on. He's maybe every once in a while he's just like, "We'll see, all oh, right." You know, he's just like, you know, like he's like, "There may be some brains, I don't know." <laughs> you know, he's like a little uh, impatient with somebody who's not there. Okay. Very cool. Anybody else have anything they think they'd be doing, or we want to head on down the street here? Uh, I think um, he'll he'll be parking it a little bit away but the way that uh craftsman shows up he he's got like a really old classic like mustang however what you don't see on it is the fact that he's basically replaced all of the original engine and done stuff like make it into like an electric engine and stuff like that to where oh, it's yeah. better for the oh, environment so cool. since you know he's yeah he can he's do that. talented mechanically. He can do that. Yeah. Very but cool. Yeah, that's that's how I would get there. All right. So we got a floater, a teleporter, and uh, a driver, and a driven. I like it. So you guys all arrive here, and you know that you guys are all. If you're not familiar with the area from having been here before, uh, Fury kind of gave you some information on where you would be headed. So you know that uh, uh, Nanny's is an Italian restaurant that sits on the western side of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy. You know that some of the buildings around it, uh, Marta's is an upscale clothing boutique featuring Italian fashions. And that uh, lies, uh, 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 like I said, what did I say? Lies northwest of it. And then uh, Nicolo's is a used bookstore and that stands to the north. And then there's an Italian grocery store featuring delicious imported goods uh, called Luciano and Mateo's uh, and it bustles with business across the street. Um, so you guys kind of move up uh, towards kind of kind of heading north. Um, so if you guys want to start moving your characters up north, however you think you would be moving on north, you can uh, I can give a little bit more of the map here so you can kind of see where you're going. I'm not going to spoil anything by doing this. So you know that this is kind of Nani's up here. Um, and so as you're kind of heading up, you notice that Nani's has uh, a covered outdoor seating across the sidewalk that spills into the street. 
And this looks like it's still standing, but even then it looks like it was uh, scorched by the blaze that destroyed um, the restaurant. Um, and the front of it, which now sits open and black and like whole in an otherwise uh, a pretty area. Um, so as you all arrive, Giovanni de or de Battista Ignelis, Ignelis uh, is sitting alone on a half metered, or excuse me, half melted chair in the outdoor seating area. He's got a broom and a dustpan leaning on the scorched table next to him. Um, he seems to be ignoring you all, though. Um, and, the, and at the moment, he's pouring himself uh, a glass of what looks like Italian brandy into a small glass, and he's uh, sipping on it as he, he's not even facing the street. He's facing the inside of his building, just staring into the darkened interior that's been in his family for generations. So as you all start to approach, he kind of greets you with a little smile. Um, but uh, uh, he says, he's like, my name is uh, Nani. But not the original one, of course. I'm going to work on my Italian accent as we go. I did it earlier. I actually practiced it earlier, but now I can't remember it. In the GTA game I'm watching right now, there's a lot of Italian accents, and I can't remember it. They have Italian what's, accents, and they have Jersey accents. What's my, what's my Italian, what's my go-to Italian thing to get myself into the Italian accent, Brendan? What do I got? Uh, what's the... Mantra. Mario what's from the Mario Brothers. Uh, what's the like what's the spaghetti. Godfather? What's, what's the food the though that they always make it fun of? Gabagool. It's the gabagool. Yeah. Okay. There it is. That's what I need. It's the gabagool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, he goes. Uh, my name is uh, Ignelis. Not the original one, of course. <laughs> kind of says with a dry laugh. He's like, that was my great grandfather, the original Giovanni Ignelis. He kind of explains, he's like, this uh, restaurant has been passed down through my family from generation to generation um, until my parents retired and it came into my hands. Gabagool. Uh, I have a wife and some sons and they work here and do a fine job. In fact, uh, we have enough money uh, for the boys. They're going to be opening a grocery store across the street. Uh... Is it called Cosmos Humans? It's not. <laughs> uh, he goes, but I don't know if we will be able to do that anymore. And he kind of glanced at you guys once when you first came up, but then while he was kind of just talking, he's almost like he trails off. He's not talking to you. He's just kind of talking out loud now. Um, he's just kind of, and he, and he just kind of stops talking and it's just sipping on his uh, Italian brandy. And uh, kind of just. Your family also sit on the sidewalk with open containers? Yeah. Oh, uh, sometimes. Uh, but that's why we have this nice seating. I'm, uh, are we... Are, are we, like, here as our superhero personas right now? Or, like, did Nick so. introduce us as... Okay, alright. So, yeah, I don't think he did, we're right Nick, out here. Nick Fury didn't necessarily, like, tell this guy that you guys were coming. He just... He's kind of... He kind of knows this guy... And was like, you know, he heard about everything that's going on and wanted you guys to go check it out. The assumption is you're here as your quote unquote superhero selves, but if you don't think that you would be and you're trying to hide, I don't know. I guess that was a good question I should have asked earlier. I think it's pretty obvious that Red Mist has a secret identity. Do the rest of you guys have secret identities, or do you think like the general public would know who you are? I think I mine would be pretty secret, but also I don't feel like. I have enough of, like, an impact that, like, I, I kind of fly under the radar in both superhero and in my other okay. life. Yeah, you're, you're secret of both mm -hmm. times, mm -hmm. both both sides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, I, I'm would, not... I think that, uh... Go ahead. Finish I was just gonna say, I'm not, like, Iron Man level that I necessarily have to worry about, you know, keeping my identity secret, because people aren't necessarily going to be coming looking for the craftsman. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Nasser, I think, like, Cairn Magician is a moniker that maybe, like, would appear in the news if he, like, made headlines, or, like, it would be if somebody else saw him and didn't know who he was, they're like, you know, like, uh, it's, you know, like, 
Doom Magician doesn't sound fun, so people call him the Cairn Magician. But I think like uh, I think he goes around as himself most of the time. So I think he's gonna go up and introduce himself to this guy. Move your character say, up. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just so everyone's there, you know. That's right. Kind of put yourself where you think you would be, and uh, Water Is Bear. The guy the can... blue circle here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't. He doesn't have a token necessarily, but yeah, you guys are. He's chilling no. outside at the front. Actually, no, no that's I what think he looks I would... like. I would walk up and, and say, my name is Nasr, the real one. Uh, the first, what did he say? Not the, not the original? I said, yeah. I am the original. Uh, oh, very it's nice. It's a pleasure uh, to meet you, Nani. You don't look a day over 45. Well, looks can be deceiving. And you see, like, his, his like, kind finger kind of, like, twitches. Oh. I was going to say, look, <laughs> looks can be deceiving. And, like, his, he, you know hand moves almost like it's like pulled by some invisible string but uh and he kind of grabs his wrist and says <laughs> it's nothing i assure you now you recently have come into some misfortune tell us a little bit more about that and he kind of looks at you and it's almost like his demeanor shuts down a bit it's like he he's kind of looking at you guys like you're you're strangers um, so you might have to we figure are. out. Yeah, exactly. Just and he's, he's, myself. he's maybe you not, he's like, uh, valid. he's like, uh, you are all an interesting looking bunch. Uh, he's like, I don't really feel like talking. That went kind of Russian there. I apologize. A gabagool. Motherfucker. Yeah, well, we will just have to, uh, assume that you burn down this restaurant and kill you. <laughs> oh, I, I think we both know that's not the case. And he kind of he kind of motions to you since you're the only one that's like, uh, I guess uh, Red Mist kind of talked to him. He kind of motions to both of you, and like wants you to like sit down with him. Pours you, a, okay. he, he grabs a couple glasses and, and pours you a drink. Yeah, I think I'll sit down and, and tell him that uh, it's like, uh, you'll find that talking to me is uh, much more preferable uh, than the other guy. And he kind of looks at you and then looks at Red Mist and he's like, I kind of got to that vibe, yes. Yeah, I'm still just wiping blood what? off my arm. <laughs> oh, I did not mean him. Question on this. Uh-huh. Since, since, uh, and, and this is more of a question for Brendan for his character. Since mm. we knew of each other, I feel like we probably would have done at least some work together since you have changed. Um, would I know of your your well, other that's a, guy? Well, that's the thing is I think that I think that you probably definitely knew Nasser when he was an Egyptian, it, like when he was right. in ancient Egypt. Like I think that's you probably knew him. And I'm and I'm thinking it's maybe like one of those things where like the Eternals had moved on from Egypt, mm -hmm. like before Egypt like fell and before like Nasser's mm -hmm. fall from grace. So maybe like this is the first time you've seen him in a really long time. And you probably don't believe that it's the same person. Yeah, maybe initially. you're like, are like, you it's sure? Like, it's like, sure? like, like, I imagine it's like, you're probably not the same person. And also, like, okay. wouldn't let's, know, uh, like, the baggage that he has now. Let's, uh, let's not leave that to let's chance. Let's, let's make a roll here. Well, let's, uh, let's do so our first roll. So you type of perception check or something? Uh, yeah, so I think that what makes the most sense here is going to be logic. Like, go ahead and give me a logic check. So what you can do is okay. open your character sheet... Me or him? Uh, we're gonna not you. You're not necessarily doing anything. I think just kind of imagine Me. craftsman's just kind of looking at you like, God, is that him? So yeah, you should be able to click on the logic. Uh, oh, I just hit roll. So uh, yeah, da, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. So click yeah, on yeah. Nice. Yeah, you got a twenty-one on oh, a vigilance. Put on that Three part. sixes. Yeah, that's actually crazy. Um, okay, a vigilance. Okay, logic or a logic. Yeah, I got a six total. Okay, everyone's clicking yeah. buttons now. <laughs> I, I had just hit roll originally, so... You're good, you're good. Uh, so you got a six total. So yeah, with yes. the six, I... So let me break down kind of what some of the numbers might be for things like this. I'm um, going to the rules. So most things are going to be either a normal, like a normal level check, or and it kind of goes up to be a challenging uh, check. And... Instead of AC in this game, we kind of have something called TN, like your target number. Yep. And so the AC for a challenging 
check, which I would say that this is. It's been thousands, or, you know, like a thousand years since you would have seen him. For a rank two is 12. So at this time, you're like, man, it kind of looks like him, but you're you're just not sure. And maybe later on, it'll gotcha. become more obvious. But without him having done like any magic okay. or having the other that guy works. come out or anything, like, you're just you're just really not sure right now. So, OK, OK, <laughs> Sarah, are you just clicking on buttons. I like it. It's not letting me roll at all. You are. You are rolling every time. It's, uh, it's, in, it's, the, in, the, the it's chat. in the chat. So in the in the top right, the first button is like a chat thing. Like it's uh, it's the Ew, chat where you can sorry. like type. No, you're good. You're good. I'm just like, yeah, we haven't necessarily gone over that. But yeah, in roll 20, when you click a roll, it's not going to show you on the screen. It just kind of puts it in the chat there. So at okay. this point, that's really the only tab you guys you should need to open. Uh, I will say if you guys, I know some of you have your character sheet open in another tab, but if you don't, if you hold alt, and double click on your character, I think it should pull up the character sheet too. So that's kind of a, a shortcut if you don't already have it pulled up. Um, I think that should work for you guys, so. Um, and I am going to just for now clear this chat. So we should be good there. Okay, cool. All right, so yeah, you don't necessarily uh, recognize him. Um, uh, so who uh, who was gonna, he was kind of offering you guys a, a drink. Who do, who would, who do you think would sit down and have a drink with this old Italian man. Oh yeah, I definitely would. Okay, yeah, for sure. I don't think I would. I think I'd probably kind of be Just over kind of on the other chilling. side of the street and it's kind of looking around. More so kind of being uh, yeah, trying to keep an eye out for things that might be potential trouble okay. and stuff, kind of yeah. being that lookout. And it's later in the day, so there's not a whole lot of people walking around, but, uh, you know, it's New York, so you never sleep. Yeah. So there's still, there's definitely still just people kind of casually walking around. Um, yeah. But if there, if there comes a time for you to do, like, a vigilance check, I'll definitely let you know um, cool. if, if something, if something's happening here. Um, uh, Water Bear, what do you think you're doing while this conversation's going on? Um, it might be pertinent to, to mention, if you haven't already or haven't spoke with anyone, that you don't really, you can't really talk, right? It's a... Uh, yeah. But I, have I you have you spoken will... to anyone via telepathy? So that is the thing that you. Yeah, we could talk. Yeah, I I will usually just create like a shroud of an image if I want to relay in the information, um, or I'll like speak to the mind, like you like hear. Yeah, hear you in your head. Uh, okay. Yeah, but okay. otherwise I don't speak. Um, okay. No, I you see water bear float down to the ground. And a straw comes out of like the proboscis that he's got going on to uh, <laughs> indicate that he was also interested in drink. And uh, Ignellis kind of looks at you and he goes, "Well, uh, uh, Gabagool." He goes, uh, "It's not the strangest <laughs> thing I've uh, uh, seen here before." I have to say Gabagool to get back into the accent. He goes, eh, "You know, this is New York. Uh, I've seen stranger things." And so he uh, he pours you a drink as well. It's a good show. Um, what did you think about the most recent season? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he um, one other question, Sarah, that we forgot to establish beforehand. You have an animal bond. Is there some sort of an animal that's following you around? I didn't ever end up making uh -huh. a, a a thing for it. But if you have a a pet animal that's following you around, I can grab a. Or if you want to find a quick image on Google or something of what you think your animal Perfect. is that's following around and want to send it over to me, certainly can. But there is there is something there. All right, so if you guys sit down, have a drink with him, he kind of, after a drink or two, he's maybe, uh, how about this weather? You know, he kind of just kind of casually chatting you up. He seems to open up a little bit. Um, so to get him to, to talk to you and kind of tell you about what's going on, we're going to do some some of our first roles here. So it kind of seems like you guys aren't trying to be necessarily like threatening him or like trying to like outsmart him or anything like that uh, to get you to accidentally tell you something. Uh, so if you're appealing to his emotions, that's going to be an ego check. So why doesn't the th anyone that's talking to him go ahead and roll me an ego check in the chat and we'll see we'll see what we get here and based on what you uh, get we can kind of role play what you said so to, to do an ego check you would just want to click on uh, the score next to ego so you would just click the number to the right of ego and that should roll the check for you um, so again 
It kind of feels cheaty that we're using this because you guys don't have to learn the system very well. But for oh, this no, system, no. it's it's a it's a D. They call it the D six one six system. So if you guys want to roll physical die, you certainly can. Always an option. You would roll three D six, but you need to make sure that you have one picked out that you remember, and that would be your Marvel die. So that Marvel die, something special happens when you roll. Um, the Marvel die. So, for instance, Sarag, who's the name of the chat, Water Bear, actually rolled the, her Marvel die. So she got a three, a Marvel, and on the uh, dice, the Marvel uh, uh, like to roll a Marvel die if you don't actually have the Marvel die is a one because like mm -hmm. you're you're the absolute best thing you can roll is a six one six because that's the name of the core universe. So that's an easy way to remember it. So you rolled a three, a one, and a four. So that's a total of a thirteen. Um, but it's a uh, I'll go ahead and say it now. It's a T and 12, target number 12. So because you succeeded and you got a Marvel die, that's actually a fantastic success. So he okay. is he is very willing to give you, in particular, information. Uh, okay. And I think probably the reason why is because you're not speaking out loud to him. So I imagine you're kind of sitting there and he just hears your voice inside of his head. Is that Because that's how you would be talking to him, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best way to talk to someone 18. is in their own voice. Did you? Yeah, you got an eighteen, which is just a—it's just a normal success, which is great. Um, so I that's a, a. And you got a third. Did you roll physical, Dylan? Yep. Okay, just making sure. Okay, so yeah, you rolled rolled normal. Uh, and that's actually crazy, Sarah, that you got the fantastic success and a success because you have a zero ego. So your ego isn't super great, <laughs> but. Uh, I think that probably because you were speaking to him in his mind that he's like willing to share more information with you. So talking back to you, because they, I think they can talk back, right? Isn't that a, we decide that's a thing. Even if you don't have the ability, can you talk back? I assume so. And, and just look. normal yeah. telepathy? Like telepathic telepathic yeah. link. The character can communicate telepathic. Mm. Uh, yes. Yes? Okay, I'll trust you on that. Okay, cool. So yeah, he speaks back to you, and only you. Um, and he basically says... He goes... Hold on, let me make sure I, I'm giving you all the information that you're supposed to go. Give me one second here. Um, for the rest of you, or even you, what do you think you would ask him? Like, what would you what would you say to him, um, Water Bear? Uh, or even the other, other two, kind of, what do you... You're trying to get a vibe for what's going on. What do you think you would be saying to him? I ask him what gets him out of bed in the morning. Okay. What are your passions, sir? He goes, he speaks back just in his head to you. He goes, uh, Gabagool. He goes, uh, my passions are. And then he kind of pauses a little bit. He's like, where? He goes, the restaurant. He's like, I am uh, trying to keep my family going. I have a wife and two children and, uh, I want. It's really just falling into a Russian thing here. I'm sorry. I want to. Uh, just want to work, and make them make money and uh, make sure my family lives a good life. Well, I'm asking these questions since Redness can also kind of communicate in a telepathic sort of way. Do you I send off like a? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say I send off like a second like. Sub a second message to, to yeah to Red Mist with like a question mark being like is there anything else as a group we want to ask him so you guys know um, I, I could say too you guys would know that coming here you were trying to figure out why his shop got burned down like why what um, happened to his shop you're trying to figure yeah, out kind of like who did it what's what's going on rivals or anyone that might want this to be the case um like, just yeah, while this is going on, I'm going to be trying to look in uh, in the window to see if I can get any clues as to what started it. Like if it's uh, like, you know, sparking uh, or, or not necessarily sparking, but like uh, any signs of electrical fire or something um, using that kind of engineering okay. mindset. Yeah, go ahead and uh, we'll take a pause on that card. Go ahead and give me a vigilance roll. I think that's. 
Well, I guess I, I think Vigilance is the is the score you would use for something like that. Does anybody? I got a to... six, 16 on, on Vigilance. Okay. Let me see. Let me make sure that that makes the most sense here. Um, for sure. I feel like it would be, but... I think it is, but I want to... Let's see. Yeah, okay, for sure. So Double check. check. Let's see. We have... God, what are these called? These are like the... I guess it's just... Uh... Are you trying to figure out what Vigilance score does? Yeah, like what, what would I use as like a, a perception check, I guess. Actually, I guess I bet I know a better way to do this. Let's just look at my pre-made character sheet. I feel like it would be one. Vigilance because it's... Yeah, so it's either going to be Vigilance or Logic. So Vigilance represents situa situational awareness, mindfulness, and discipline. And the logic is a character's power of reason and insight. So I guess it could go either way, whichever one you think you want more. Vigilance is kind of like you just seeing things in general, but logic is maybe you being able to put things together. Yeah, I think both work pretty well. Yeah, I'm going to go with Vigilance because because I have a higher score in that. Okay, so yeah. So I'll you're kind of looking vigilance. around, and it looks almost like too obvious that it was just like, Molotov's thrown through a window. Like it's okay. it's there's it's like not like anything was thing. trying to be secret. Yeah, you can see glass on the inside. You can see like scorch marks and maybe even the glass left over from the bottles. It doesn't look like anything super secretive happened here or okay. there was any trying to hide it necessarily. It just looks like it was burnt def definitely on purpose. Uh okay. and definitely cool. like maliciously. So I mean not cool, but Yeah, cool yeah, cool to cool I to know. To have that information. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, Waterbear, you said you were gonna ask him, what? Sorry, after after Red Mist told you something. I was just gonna ask him. Uh, I know his family's his greatest passions. He's trying to keep them safe. We're trying to keep them safe as well. So I was just gonna ask him about if he had any inclinations about who could have done that to his. He, he responds back again in his head, and he's just back to you, and he goes, "Oh yes, I know exactly who did this." He goes, uh, he goes, it was definitely, uh, Anchiara and Paola Lera. He goes, it's, uh, it's do you mind writing that down? <laughs> he goes, it's, uh, it's two brothers of the Magia, uh, two lieutenants in the Manfredi family. He goes, I know them very well. They come around often to collect protection money. They've been doing so for the past decade. I grew up with them. We went to school together. I've relied on them for actual protection from time to time. They uh, sometimes stepped in to land a hand when the police were too busy. But I uh, never really suspected that they would turn on me like this. The uh, place burned down last night at uh, 3 a.m. or so, I think. Um... He goes, they've been, uh, the Magia have been coming around, leaning on everyone in this block to sell, to sell our places to them. I don't know why. Um, and they haven't offered any of us a fair price. Even me. Um, and even though that's the case, uh, oh no, my music's been paused due to inactivity. Come back. He goes, uh, oh God. Commercial is horrible. It's just a high pitched screeching sound. Please stop. Bring me back to Italy. Um, he goes, uh, even though that's the case, many of the people around here have given in. Um, some of them were older, close to retirement. Um, others just knew that they couldn't have any bad blood with the Magia. I outright refused, though, and even threatened to call the police. I know it was them. I know it was. And then he just kind of goes back to, to drinking and and sitting, uh, staring at the at the thing. And again, he was just telling Water Bear this. So Water Bear, you would have to say that out loud if you or want to share. You just say that you share that information with everyone. But right now, you are the only one who knows it. Um, before I share the information, I go ahead and ask him if there's any place that he thinks that it would be likely that we would find them. Yeah, he goes, why? You think you can help? 
You think that you can do anything about that family? He goes, the Magia is one of New York City's largest and best established organized crime rings. You know, they're uh, actually from Italy. They have branches all over the world. Nothing you can do about it. I show him a picture of his kids in the future. What? And, this, <laughs> and basically... <laughs> Kind of like, like, yeah, <laughs> just, just showing him that what it, it, it happened if a family that powerful were to continue doing stuff like that with their power. And, and kind Jeez. of like persuade him to be like, Smart. look, this is going to keep happening if you don't like, if we don't work on it. Like, okay. I understand, but like, we need to work on it. Yeah. Yeah, just to enlighten him. Yeah. Um, Schmitty, give me another vigilance check. Damn, quick with it. All right, so the craftsman's kind of looking inside, listening to this conversation. And right around that time, he sees uh, two people he doesn't know around the, or even three, rather, around the top, kind of the north corner of the map here. Um, kind of come around the corner, and they don't look like they're like bad guys necessarily, like right away. Uh, but they're definitely um, uh, they're definitely kind of looking down the street, if that makes sense. They're kind of staring at you all, and uh, they're they're staring right at old old Ignellis here. Um, and hey, he, Ronnie. what's up? Do you know these fools? And uh, before he's even able, before you even get that finish uh, that question, well question uh-huh is that so is that something that nasser would have noticed because so the reason i ask is if if i clock them i would probably under my breath kind of signal like there's someone here hoping that it's like let you know let the team yeah, know yeah, yeah. without letting you, the you... other guys know we know yeah 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 well, they, they come around the corner and they kind of look like they're almost ignoring you guys and kind of almost beelining for him. And you kind of notice that and maybe kind of give a nudge to whoever's closest to you. Um, but it's like right around that time, Ignellis stands up and he just yells down the street. He goes, how could you do this to me? And he's kind of like pointing at the place. He's like, we were kids together. And the people on the street kind of scoff at him. Uh, and they said, they, they'd say something like, we warned you, old man. And it's like, it's your fault that you didn't take us seriously. And they just pull out pistols. And Ignellis hells back and he goes in, and he just yells I in disbelief. Your city. Yeah, he yells back in disbelief. He's like, you're going to kill me over a burned out building? You're going to deprive my children of their father? And then they, they yell back and they say something like, hey, we've always been on your side. We weren't the ones to burn down your place. Although, uh, we can't say it wasn't our organization who did it. And he goes, if you didn't notice, it burned down late at night when no one was around. We didn't want anybody to get hurt. You should have sold to us, old man. And he goes, yeah, and he goes, I teleport right here. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So if you, if you uh, instantly teleport right there, yep, <laughs> that's fucking face. crazy. All right, yeah, that that works. So in that, that amount of time, I was, waiting. Guns. I was waiting for them to say enough, or I was like, "Yep, there it is." Just so you know, there's like a like it's like like half a paragraph left, and at the very end no. of this paragraph, peeling the peeling the the curtain back a little bit, it's it says, "Assuming the players let you get this far, it's time to roll for initiative." <laughs> <laughs> um, Good call. Whenever they Good call, whenever Roger. they whenever they pull out their pistols, um, I have a return fire reaction. Okay, so let's do this first. Let's roll for initiative. Okay. And I am going to give um, uh, Craftsman and Red Mist a edge on your initiative roll. And so what edge means is it doesn't mean you get to re-roll your entire three, you know, six one six twice and take the better score altogether. It means you get to roll your initiative. And then you can take any one of those numbers that's there and re-roll it and take the better of the two values. I say any right. one of those numbers because sometimes maybe you rolled 
uh, you want to re-roll that middle one to get that fantastic success. Even though your other number is lower, maybe you just really are gunning for that, that fantastic success. So I'm going to give you guys an edge on that. And cool. you should just be able to click on... Uh, actually, let me have pull up this turn order. So you guys should be able, on the left-hand side, if you guys don't recall, there's uh, in your toolbar, mm -hmm. there's a little uh, clock icon. If you click on that, it should give you your initiative. Um, and clock I think you icon in the corner. In the top left, there's a little, like, uh, in your toolbar of all your different tools. It should be When you clicked bottom. on it, it opened up for me. Oh, did it? Can you guys all see this new, this this thing, the yeah. screen? I, yes. Yeah, I, yeah, I can see the turn yeah. order. Okay, yeah, that's I what I was trying to get I know where to click for. Okay, okay I didn't realize I just... that me opening it opened it for all of you. Okay, that works. So initiative is in the top left of your character sheet as well. But I can't, I cannot click on initiative, but it, there is a, a roll right next to it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, that's it's, what it's... I was about to ask was, is that what I click? Yep, so I think you, okay, yeah. And make sure everybody clicks on that. But so now, Justin, you have an edge. So you have a five, a three, and a four. So if you want to physically re-roll one of your die and then manually change your initiative to account for that, you can. So um, you can. I'm going to I'm gonna use a, the D6 up so, in the corner. Yeah, I'm going to re-roll the middle. Okay. So you got a four uh, instead, so you have a... 16 instead of a 15. Yeah. So if you want, I think you should be able to click on the number 15 and change it, but if you can't, let me know and I can do it. Uh, I cannot. Okay, I will do it then. Oh, wait, um, uh, I was count I was on, on the side, sorry. Not not the order. Okay, I got it. Do I need to input mine somewhere, or do I just need to roll digitally for my yep. initiative? Yeah, uh, oh, so hold on, I can add your turn. If you rolled it physically, I can, I can add yeah. you. It's an 11. Uh, Okay, so if I click on you and click add turn, there you are, 11, okay. And because I've already revealed these guys, I don't think there's a way for me to add turn on them and have you guys not be able to see it. So we're just gonna let you guys be able to see this. So initiative, roll. Oh wait, I need to, I can just delete these oh wait no you guys can't see that can you yeah we saw it yeah oh we can okay that's fine you have a plus one to your vigilance it's true see you're only in chat yeah we all did better that's fair yeah uh, I got a critical years. so Okay, let me. I'll double nice. check that there's not. You got a fantastic success because you rolled a. Yeah. Oh yeah, you did. Look at that marble die. Okay, I'll make sure. I'll double check. I think that might just mean you get to go first regardless, and we get like a like a surprise round essentially. Okay, uh, I don't know why. Sorry. Okay, so this is a nine, ten. And then we sort. All right, let me check real quick. Oh, wait, let me get some Marvel fight music going on here, too, instead of the Italian the Italian jams. Um, oh, God, I can't get out of this. Yeah, there's a really good song in, uh, in Moon Knight. Uh, one of the fight scenes. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, but one of them had, like, a really cool fight, fight music. I don't know what I can play without getting uh, copyright. Yeah, I can't play. Oh, God. Dude. The first thing that comes up is like the fucking portal. Oh, God. So good. Um, epic medley orchestral cover. Actually, no, this one's probably better. Okay. All right, so, okay, I was going to double-check the rules on initiative. Let me do that for you real quick here, Brendan. Make sure it might just be you just have a better role in general. Uh, initiative. Do, 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 do. Okay. Characters who get a fantastic result on their initiative check get to take part in a bonus round before the regular combat begins. <laughs> 
They what do is... so in regular initiative order, skipping those who didn't get a fantastic result. After they're done, the first regular round begins. Okay. Nice, so you get two turns. So yeah, you get to go first. Spira, da, da, da. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, it's up to the narrator whether or not a given character is surprised, as this depends on a great deal on the circumstances. Characters who are surprised by their opponent when combat starts have trouble on their initiative check. So I'm actually, for a couple reasons here, going to give a couple surprise rounds to people. Um, I think that... God damn it. I am stuck in this mode again where it doesn't think I'm actually clicking on the thing so I can't turn down my music. Motherfucker. <laughs> uh... God, there's just nothing right I can do in this situation either to fix this. Um, it's, oh, wait, no, I got it. Oh, fuck you, bitch. Sorry. Not you, Brenda. That was rude. It's been a roller coaster of emotion. <laughs> well, it's rude. just like it gets, like, my icon for my activity gets stuck in the top right, or, like, top left, and I can't click on it, so it doesn't matter. All right, so I think there's an argument to be made that craftsman for saying that he wasn't talking to anyone or doing anything like he was just watching for people is also going to get a bonus round here um and then i would argue um red mist you are going to be able to move before at least those other three so there was a tie there so you're definitely moving before those three are um, but not necessarily before everybody else. So craftsman oh, yeah. and carrying magician. Basically where we are in the, in the uh, yeah, where you just started. You you teleported there to start the thing. So, but um, craftsman technically you get your bonus round first because you rolled a better initiative. So we'll go craftsman and then card magician and then we'll go back to craftsman and card magician and go from there. So to talk a little bit about combat, let me pull up the combat rules and read them to you. Uh, Let's see, chapter four, combat. Um, uh, so let me, I wanna, there's a section here that I can read. I should just have it up and ready. Ways to play, da, 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 fun free form, yep, 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 let's go, yep, timing. Everything moves incredibly fast. A round represents five seconds of time in this game. So keep that in mind, it's extremely important. So how play starts is we're gonna determine positions, Roll initiative, start a new round. Each character takes their turn. Uh, and yeah, it's it's very standard D&D &D in that. Um, okay, we've determined positions. Uh, we're on a bonus round. And it looks like you can do as much on a bonus round as you can any other round. It's not like a move or an attack. Um, Okay, so let's talk about the different actions. So on a character's turn, they can take one standard action and one movement action. They can take these actions in any order, and they can take their standard action at any point before, during, or after their movement action. Um, some things are no action required. Um, so, you know, if I just obviously it feels like a thing that you could probably do, such as speaking, reloading weapons, reading a sign, doing simple things within reach, like turning on the lights, opening a door or window. All of those are probably going to end up being no action required. Um, each character also gets one reaction per round. So a reaction can tem temporarily interrupt the initiative order to allow the character to respond to a trigger of some kind. Um, so that's that's pretty standard, and you guys will want to be looking at your powers right now to see what kind of actions they are. You can also hold a turn or reserve an action, which is like a, a setting up like you know like a trigger and that sort of thing. What was that? Is that called holding, right? And like Pathfinder and Starfinder, just hold your action. Ready in action. Ready in action. That's what that's ready in specific yep. action. Yep. Yeah. So you could do that in this game as well. So you can ready action. You gotta you know still pick your trigger and what you want to do during that. Um, but your standard actions are as follows. So they are attack, dodge, escape, grab, help, move, or use a power. So I think, oh man, I don't have this assigned to you either. Dylan, you are, that's red mist, okay. So for instance, I think on your, yeah, so on your character sheet, on actions, 
There's a there's a tab there on the right that has your powers, and then the tab mm -hmm. at the top also says actions. You can see actions, reactions, yep. and movements. Just kind of kind of like uh, Path Builder lets you do, and even Hephaestus lets you do. Sees all the things that you can do that just like anybody can do. So definitely kind of be looking through those to decide what you want to do on your turn. Uh, but with that, we'll just jump into it. I've talked enough. First up is Craftsman. What do you want to do? These three guys pull the pistol, and they're having a yelling match back and forth um, with uh, Ignellis, who was just kind of sitting here minding his own business. Um, as soon as I see that they pull out guns, uh, like I said, I'm going to use the return fire power. Okay. Um, I think it is going to so be So I will double click on button. you and return fire. Oh, sick. Look at that. Puts uh, it right in the chat. So the character makes an agility attack against a target's vigilance defense. If the attack is a success, apply health damage. Okay, so we'll, we'll hit that road when we... Let me... Let me give each one of these guys a color real quick. Okay, so there's uh, blue, green, and orange there now, so you could decide who you want to, to do this thing at. <laughs> the music just turned into a God of War trailer. I did. <laughs> um, and just so you know, this is a reaction. So you could say, I know that you were kind of using your reaction to react to them in real time, but like as far as initiative goes, you could use a normal attack and then save your reaction. Because they haven't actually like shot yet necessarily. They just pulled out their pistols, if that makes sense. So you could save your reaction and say, you know, if they shoot like later, like at the end of the turn, then you could do this then. Um, I guess that's you, fair. Yeah, you would want to just probably use just a, a normal or like a standard yeah, action I'll, move right now. I'll, I'll do that. That's that's a good okay. idea. Um, then in that case... You do that. I'm going to grab another beer. This was supposed to be epic fight music. What's happening? I mean, it's a... Yeah, you guys remember when this music was normal? <laughs> I remember. Mind of sight with their mind. Five spaces. Okay. Um, damn, I'm way far away. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four... Yeah, so each square should be five, so your movement speed is gonna five. be... Yeah, based on... Three, four, five. I was hoping I could use uh, telekinetic manipulation and Ooh. like bring like whip their guns out, but the. Let me make sure there's see. not like a thing that you could do. There's a range on it, and I'm. I don't know if there's a yeah. range. Maximum range for this is five spaces. Oh, times the character's rank, so I can go up to ten spaces. There you go. Yep. There you go. Um. So. Just to okay, check and just so we're clear, many... so some powers have attacks with a One, range two, limited in spaces. Four, five, Any attacks six, within this range are treated six, normally. Roll them normally. Any attacks up to double this range have trouble, and any attacks beyond double the range are impossible. So trouble just means that you roll, take the best number, roll again, and then you take the worst of the two. But if for gotcha. some reason so the ability highest. that you're using or anything else that you have gives you um, edge, edge cancels out trouble. So edge is like the inverse gotcha. of trouble, but they can cancel each other out as well. So a lot of people's powers have like take a shot and have have an edge on it. So if it's like outside, mm -hmm. you know, if it's double the range, then you would just yeah. have a neutral and you wouldn't have an edge necessarily. So yep. But yeah, um, you should be good. Yeah, this has a this has a range of ten, and they even the farthest one that. The measurement tool says it's eight. So, okay. um, yeah, I'm gonna make that attack. Um, it doesn't say any sort of a roll. Oh wait. So yeah, the go ahead and makes roll. Makes a logic check against opponent's agility. Okay. Yep. So against their agility. Okay. So who are you attacking first of all? Um, I'm gonna go with. I'm I'll pull up the damage here. I'll go blue. Okay. On this one. Uh, logic. Okay, so a little bit of math going to be involved with this one. 
Okay, so you rolled a 10, and so we are going against his... Um, it was against his logic... Or what was it against? Ag uh, agility defense. Okay, so his agility defense is actually going to be an 11, so you miss. So your defense score is just your score plus 10. So he's got... Uh, peeling back the curtain, he's got a 1 in agility, so his defense is 11. So you, you do miss on that. So what was the... Uh, the ability was telekinetic... She, like... Pick up. I was, I was, yeah, I was planning on like, get, like grabbing yeah, the gun that is in his hand and like yank it away so that it was out of his hands. That was my plan. Okay, yeah, that's fair. But did not work. Not this time. Um, so good that idea, was that though. was your that's surprise good. round. Um, so all good there. Uh, next time, Schmini, I think you can click your attack. So see, it says logic, and on the far right, it says attack. Uh, yeah, that's what you would want to do. See, it says like DM times uh, two plus one on, next to the right uh -huh. of logic all the way. So if you click on that, uh, it rolls your logic score. See in the bottom right, it rolls your logic, but also gotcha. gives you your damage right there. Um, because gotcha. it's all one roll. So how, how damage works, just to let everyone know, is that your rank is your damage multiplier. So at rank two, your guys' damage multiplier is two. But then you also have other things that can add to that. So if you have, like, Mighty or anything like that, that's going to increase your melee damage multiplier. And if they have any sort of defenses, that can lower your multiplier. Um, and then your, like, your... Whatever the score is of the thing you're using. So, like, your logic, if it's a 1, you get, like, a plus 1 to that. So if, like, your melee, you're using a plus 1. So, for example, and the example in the book they give is Spider-Man's Mighty. Okay, so Spider-Man is rank 4, so his damage multiplier is times 4. And so Spider-Man's Mighty, one power adds plus one to his melee damage multiplier. That raises his melee damage multiplier from times four to times five. And then on top of this, you add the ability score of the ability used to damage. So he's using melee, so he's got a five in melee. It seems like a lot of math, but since we can just click it in here, I just want to make sure everyone knows how it's, how it's being done. So your damage multiplier is going to be your D-Marvel, which is the middle die, times five and for your multiplier and then plus five for your score so like in that instance his would have been a 25 so in your case you roll the four or i rolled a four for you you roll the four your time your rank is two so that's times two so that's an eight and then you have a plus one in logic which is what i rolled for you so it ends up being a nine does that make sense yep it'll do the math for you but just want to let everyone know okay that's your surprise round so you see these guys come around the corner there's a yelling match going on. They pull out their pistols. Red Mist teleports behind them, and you, like, pick something out of the air and try to throw it at Blue, but he ends up dipping out of the way. Um, next up is uh, Karen Magician. But first of all, he's going to be like, what? What? Are we killing these goons? Um, and he's going to he's gonna turn and look back at Red Mist, and Red Mist is going to be gone, and there's just going to be, like, a splatter <laughs> behind him. Oh, he's so gonna look over there, and he's gonna see him like throwing a throwing a punch first, and he's gonna say, "I guess that means we are going to fight." And he's like, "No, not now, not yet." And then uh, he's like, <laughs> well, "There will be time for that later." But he is going to one, two, three, cross the street uh, to get an angle on these guys, and he is going to hex bolt green, I believe. And as far as I can tell, hex bolt does not have a range. It simply okay. cost me five focus. Can you put it in the chat? I think if you click on it, you can like put it in the chat somehow so everybody can see it. Awesome. Hex bolt. So yeah, it's a concentration. It costs you five focus, so make sure you mark that. Um, and yeah, so you're going to make an ego check against the target's agility to defense. On success, the attack does regular damage. On a fantastic success, it does double damage. It causes the target trouble for one round. So you, what you want to do is click on the ego attack button. So on your ego roll, there's an attack. Go ahead and click that. All right, so he's going to cross the street, and then he's going to say, prepare to meet my grandfather in the afterlife. And he's going to fire Ooh, at this cheeky. guy. A uh, really low roll. So you got a 10. A, so it's, it's probably going to be, a, it's definitely going to be a mid. Who are you fighting against, though? Green. Green. You said green. Um, so yeah, his ego, because it was against, oh, against agility, agility defense. defense. His agility, agility defense. defense. Is it? Is it? Make an ego check against the target's oh, agility right. defense. Agility okay, defense. it doesn't matter. Either way, it's yeah. an 11. So yeah, you just missed by Dang. one. Yeah. Okay. 
I so rolled you, as, almost as low as I could possibly yeah. roll. And again, at any time, if you guys want to roll physically, that's fine. It just it does a lot of the math for you, so at least to get started, it might make make it easier to roll in the chat. But definitely feel free to say uh, fuck the uh, the the uh, electronic Police. rolling. Oh. But okay, yeah, that too. Um, all right, so that's the surprise round. So you guys were both like. Karen Magician was like really ready to go and Craftsman was like right there watching out so now we actually are going to start the actual combat here and we're back to excuse me back to Craftsman yeah and at least to start off with if you guys are using new powers go ahead and uh make them appear in the chat there so everybody can read them because I love that. I don't have that set up where it can be viewed on stream right now. However, I think I can... You can just change your screen to your yeah. Roll20, can't you? Yeah. It just is a little bit off, but uh, that's okay. Yeah. And that's uh, that's the little message bubble, right? On the right of the ability? I believe yeah. so. Yep. I, yeah, I haven't actually done it yet. Yep. Okay, I'll try it when it's my turn. It is, yeah. It's like scroll. Okay. I think I could probably actually. I bet, I bet the left one's actually it rolls for you. Oh. Go ahead and try it. I guess. I mean. Uh. I guess. Okay. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try the elemental burst. Um. Mm -hmm. Should be in there okay. now. Okay. Makes a rage attack against uh, an enemy line of sight. Okay. What is your? Because you took elemental power. What element do you control? Like what uh, are you? Fire. Fire. So fire. You you fucking I'm, firebend at this guy. You look like a uh, yep, character. Yep, I'm thinking kind of, you know, like a, a forge, you know, working in the mm -hmm. forge and stuff. Forge so fire. fire is going to be. Ah, yeah, we did talk about that. Sick. Okay, so uh, it's a ranged attack against an enemy in line of sight. Um, so so just, what uh, would be range? It's a good question, actually. Let me. Ranged is agility. Is it? Okay. Go ahead and try to. Uh, what were you just saying? The other button tech. Target. Click the button to oh. the left of uh, Elemental Burst and see what it does. I just did, and it just went black. It sure did. It didn't do anything. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. I wonder if that's just a, a broken thing. Uh, 12 um, so a 12, agility. and it's against their agility defense, I assume. Which is 11, so that's a hit. So, yeah, you hit and this it did guy. Five damage. Five, and which one were you shooting at again? Uh, blue again. Okay. So, blue is one of the two brothers, so he just. Oh, he gets. What did you. Th oh, so you just hit him with this fire, and it just fucking, like, singes yeah. him and catches some of his stuff on fire, and he's just like. Damn it, who are you people? Okay. I don't know. Can, can I call show. Me, you can call me. Joe. Oh, I can see it. Okay. <laughs> I have, like, I'm tracking their health there. I don't... Nah, I guess I... If there's, like, bigger enemies, maybe I'll show you guys the health. Well, maybe... I don't know. It's kind of cool that I can All show you guys their health, time. but I don't know if I want to show you their health. But uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, sick. Um... Uh, yeah, no, you I say keep up the spectacle. What was your... What did you say to him? Sorry. You can call me Joe. Oh. <laughs> Joe! Is that a Joe Mama joke? Damn you. Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're okay. thousands of years old. You've, you've heard them all. I'm okay. Sure uh, I know we have like just jumped between so. two characters here, but we are in the actual initiative order. I guess, did you want to move at all? Um, No, I'm going to try to kind of keep myself back a little ways okay not i i, I want to be at least kind of close where i'm in range of stuff but yeah i'm not gonna be i'm, I'm not gonna be doing much melee combat which is weird for me <laughs> cool all right i'm into it all right care magician what are you gonna do here okay uh i really think that uh the only thing i can do at this distance is some more hex bolts. Um, so I'm still doing some ego checks here. Okay. So um, there. 
double check that that's calculated correctly. Okay. I understand. Uh, well, well, let's roll it again and see what happens this time. So 16, so 6, 3, and 2, plus your ego of 5. So 6, and that's 11, 5, 16. Yeah, that, that looks right. Um, so yeah, 16 okay. uh, is going to be a hit because it's against... How does it calculate the damage? Oh, what? no. So your damage no. is 3 because it's the middle one, times 2 because of your rank. And then plus cool. five because your ego skill is plus five. So like I have discipline, and that means I add one to my ego damage multiplier. Okay, I don't know if it's calculating that in. So yeah, it, it would be um, you, if you you would want to look through any of your powers and make sure you don't have anything that adds anything different to that. Uh, it doesn't seem like it adds that in. We're kind of learning yeah, the character sheets curious. as we go. I thought maybe yeah. it was, but I, I didn't know where the. Yeah, so, so we it just... always uses the middle die to do damage? Yep, middle die, like... your marble die is damage, yep. Okay, all right. That makes more sense. Yeah, um, it's your so D I, marble. So I hit this time, and I'm going to do 14 damage, I think, instead of... Three times three is nine, plus five is 14. Yep, so you're going to do... And who are you attacking? Uh, green again. Okay. Wait, did green already get hit once, or am I tripping? No, I hit I blue. Orange is the only one that hasn't been attacked, right? Did I? Yeah. Somehow I. Yeah, because Brendan and I are the only ones who have moved, and we yeah. both missed on our first on mm -hmm. the surprise round. But somehow I think I made them all the same cool. character technically, um, but yeah, you one shot this guy. <laughs> this guy is done. You. So this is this is interesting. So, do you have the? You should have uh, all heroes unless they are like explicitly stated to be villains. Have a the heroic trait so you don't kill him but you do completely knock him unconscious and he is out of this fight we have the heroic trait i don't think I have we all do well you 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 guys I didn't, I didn't make you guys add it but unless you were like yeah, explicitly I, I, saying that you were a villain it's implied that you guys have the heroic trait um, okay. and that just well, basically means that you people that kill people are villains mm -hmm. I, right but if you like, were a villain then you would have to like explicitly take that trait to say that you don't kill people but like all heroes by like default kind of have it if that makes sense okay. um yeah let me it's a tag excuse me it's also interesting i didn't really think about it but because i kind of have the criminal backstory mm -hmm. uh i have several things that probably would come into play here like access to the black market and streetwise like i yeah you bought you might people. have uh there's a very good chance yeah I, I didn't necessarily i should have known that um i should have been more aware you probably are aware like all the stuff that uh uh ignelis was telling uh -huh. you you probably just are confirming in your head you're like yep the the um <laughs> tell me something i don't know yeah uh, so i don't know we take we take like out that freddy's or yeah they're they're that and everything and um, yeah, so you take out this guy, and he just kind of kind of falls down unconscious. He's not like you know bleeding. He kind of looks like he might still be breathing a little bit, um, but he is uh, he is knocked unconscious here. Um, so you still have uh, movement left, yeah? I do. I don't think I'm gonna go anywhere, but I am gonna say something like uh, you know like second times the charm type thing. Where he, he's he missed the first one, but I definitely uh, sent him to greet Anubis on the second one. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, he's got a little, a little booklet of uh, modern day phrases that he's trying out. That's right. Second um, time is uh, the after show. he uh, that guy falls down. Um, uh, God, what's the guy? These guys' names. He looks at him, he goes, "Brother, no!" He goes, "You bastard wizard!" <laughs> um, but it is now a water bear's turn. <laughs> What does a water bear want to do here? With my stuff to see. I probably have to move forward, right? Uh, it depends. So, I think we kind of talked about, like, your main attack is a telepathic blast. Yeah. And it has, uh, seem, like, you have lane of, line of sight, so you don't actually have to move. As long as you can see the person, you can hit them with a telepathic blast. It's got unlimited range. 
All right, well, I'm going to hit orange with telepathic blast then. Okay, so I'm going to put that in the chat so everybody can see what telepathic blast is to start with. So it's the character makes a logic attack against the target in line of sight. If the attack is a success, it inflicts regular focus damage. Regular focus damage, interesting. On a fantastic success, the target takes double damage instead and is stunned for one round. So you're like hitting their focus. You're kind of inflicting, I didn't even read that originally, but you're like inflicting their ability to, to make attacks later. Um, okay, so it's going to be a logic attack. So if you have your character sheet open on your on the logic. left there, yep, you're going to click not on logic. You're going to click on where it says like DM times two plus four. That's your logic okay. attack button. Okay, so you hit a 16, so that definitely hits. And you hit 12 damage. So that's pretty pretty, pretty solid damage. I don't think you have anything that makes your... It doesn't look like you have anything that makes your attacks more powerful, which is fine. And which one were you attacking, blue or orange? Orange. Okay, so orange, orange. is going to take uh, 12 uh, focus damage. So he is, he is, like, having trouble, like... Like, he looks, for lack of a word, he looks healthy, but he yeah. kind of looks like he's out of his mind a little bit. Like, he doesn't really know what the hell's going on. Okay. Um, you can also move if you'd like to, but if you don't, you can just stay in the street there. That works fine. Yeah, I'll just stay back. Okay, cool. That's the end of your turn. All right, Red Mist, we're finally here to you before they cool. got to attack. So you, you teleport there. And, uh, like, Cairn Magician and Craftsman both try throwing stuff and miss and basically just try throwing stuff again and end up hitting. And fucking Blue gets hit hard, is hurting bad, and Green just fucking instantly goes down. What do you do? Oh, and then Orange kind of just, like, kind of falls to his knees like he's got, like, the craziest fucking headache. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do myself a, uh, a change strike. Chain strike, yeah. Chain strikes, okay. Oh. You throw it in the chat. Awesome, love it. Okay, so the character makes a close attack with an edge. Awesome. If the attack is a success, the enemy takes regular damage. On a fantastic success, the character can also make an additional chain strike. And who are you attacking? Orange, you said? Uh, yeah. What did you yeah, say? Yeah. He, okay. I, I hadn't said, but yeah, I was going to go for orange. Okay, cool. And I don't see anything that gives you like a, a bonus to your damage, so the damage should be good. So go ahead... And uh, so you're making a, uh, it's going to be a melee attack. Yeah, because it's just punching. Yep. Okay, not bad, not bad. So that'll be, um, I rolled a 16. Okay. And I so that's a hit. Up by two. Okay. So what's your, what's your, what was your D Marvel, your special? A six? Okay, so a one is the yes. best as far as, like, getting your fantastic success, but a six is the best just numerically. Um, so you have an edge, which means you get to re-roll one of those to make it a higher number. So okay. here's your here's your dilemma that you kind of face. You don't have to re-roll it, and you always will take the better one, so there's really no harm in doing it. Um, but you've already hit, so you're going to hit regardless. So the only thing that you could do better is really re-roll that D-Marvel and hope you get a one on it instead. Right. But you right. take the better of I the two, so there's really no harm in doing it. So that's probably what you would want to do. Yeah. Here. And I rolled a six and a four on the other. So if anything else, I just get a plus two. Best case scenario. So yeah, I'll, I'll re-roll yeah, this. Yeah, and, it's, and you've already hit either way. Uh, so yeah, because I already kind of uh, I rolled that, a so. two, so I'll take okay. the six. So take the six. So your six is going to be your... Um, uh, DMR, yeah, your damage. No, uh, it's a six times two, so that's gonna be twelve plus yeah. five. So you do seventeen points of damage. So you go and just hit this guy, or I guess d describe your knockout. <laughs> he's he's also unconscious now. Uh, yeah, no, I uh, did what I was set out to do. I teleported and punched him in the face. Uh, you know, Hitler style. Just, okay. We just pose. We pose mid mid frame for the camera. Sick. <laughs> All right. So you like teleport to this guy and just fucking knock him out. Sick. Yeah, okay. Just clean cock. So you have a move action left if you would like to move, and if not, you can just stay here. 
Um, is there any way I can, like, look around for other people? Um, is, yeah, that, like, go ahead and give me, a, give me a vigilance check, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just roll. Nine. So nine. Uh, you don't, you don't have very good vigilance, but you don't really, you don't really notice anybody else. Like you, you saw some like other civilians on the road, but like everyone seems to have run away. It doesn't look like there's anybody like lurking around a corner ready to come and attack you or anything like that necessarily. It okay. kind of looks like, uh, just these, these two brothers and one like kind of extra goon were sent after you. Maybe even like the extra goon was sent after you because like you might consider yourself rank two, but like, who knows? <laughs> Uh, well, regardless, I'm, I, I sh I'll go ahead and teleport uh, onto the corner of this building. Like you teleport there. five feet away? All right, I like it. Poof. That just feels, like, painful for no reason, you know? I like it. All right, well, no, so... I'm elevated. I'm, like, I'm like on oh, the Oh, you're on the... Here. Oh, okay, 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 gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so this guy is done. All right, so you are done. So it is now Blue's turn, and he has seen... One of his brother go down, and then this other guy go down, and he just goes, "Damn it, Ignellus, you should have stayed with us." And he's just gonna fucking dip, and he just starts running <laughs> away. He says, "Fuck this shit, I'm out," and runs as far away as he can. Which I guess I should be more technical about how far he can run. Uh, where do you guys see your? Okay, speed. You click on that. Okay, so he's got that. So he gets from here. He goes. Well, Okay, yeah, we can't see him five. anymore. He's gone. Yeah, he's got five. Um, let me give a little reveal area here so you guys can kind of see some more. So that's all the far that he gets, but he looks like he is just hightailing it out of here. Like, damn it, Ignilus, you should have should have stuck with us. Um, so you guys can let him go, or you cannot. But it is now Craftsman's turn again, and we've got two unconscious goons kind of sitting up there and then one that's dipping but he's kind of around the corner so you can't really see him now but you saw him run away after uh red mist punched one of his boys out okay. um Uh, he's I'll point out that double moves are a thing as well. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I still wouldn't reach him. Um, That's a good point, Brendan. He would probably... He's, like, running down the street. Like, you guys could probably catch up to him if you want. And if you have, like, you could get onto this road if you have, like, line of sight weapons. But uh, he is, he's definitely trying to dip. I'll, I'll, I don't know if we could. Uh, I don't think any of us... Do any of us have a run speed of over five? Well, I'm more I'm saying that, like, if well, I guess I guess he dipped around the corner, but if, like, for instance, Water Bear could get up to this corner, she has attacks that have no range that are just line of sight based. So, yeah, yeah, and I can tell. Well, and, pretty and even Hexbolt, right? My, have no, has no I, range. I have a telekinetic ability as well, that is also line of sight. It's just I don't know if I like. Yeah, you if, get you have two I, unconscious of these guys sitting right here too, so you. There's potential that right. you could work with I, And that's what I was trying to see, because, like, moving five, one, two, three, four, five, puts me here, which is just outside of line of sight. So, yeah. Um, I am going to... I'm going to move... Three, four, five. I'm going to come here, and I'm going to... I'm going towards heading uh, towards green or orange, and I'm gonna try to secure them. Um, and I'll I'll like say that out loud so that people know, like, hey, I'm gonna cover these guys because you know someone might be able to take you know get that last guy, whereas I I cannot easily get to it. So that's, yeah, if you think you is... keep running in a straight line, I guess. We can take I guess, yeah, I'll, five I'll turns to run to the end of the, end of the street. Yeah, it, I mean, I'll, at this point, move. if you guys want... Because oh. he's not going to do anything but try to dip. Are you guys going to try to pursue him? Like, do you I want... will not, but okay. I'm... We'll go to I'm each person. Craftsman. Craftsman's good with these guys. Karen Magician, are you going to try to catch up to him? We don't have to play uh, through every single round. We can, we can just... 
I will say that if you guys try to catch up to him, you probably can, but you would probably have time for one more attack on him to see if you can knock him out before he, you know, they live here, so he can dick, dip, he can dick, he can dip in and out of buildings pretty well and probably get away from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I'll take one more shot at him. I will, like, say okay. that so, I yeah, you like, got like a... double moved on my next turn, and then before he has, runs like, out of line Throw a hex bolt down the road. Yeah, I'll fire one hex bolt at him. It might be just a waste of my focus, but we'll see. Um, so I will go ahead and decrease my focus again. And that's against an agility check, right? Yeah. So that's a T and 11. Do an ego check. Hit him. And you hit 15 damage. They only have 10 HP. So yeah, you knock him out too. 20 damage. <laughs> oh, 20. Oh yeah, you have the... That's, the, that's right. So you knock him out too. He's like running away and just boom, face plants on the ground as this hex bolt just fucking hits him in the back of the head. And do you potentially like drag him back to these guys or are you leaving him down the road? Um, I will let somebody else go and collect him well, if that's, they want to. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, it's my, a good opportunity to, like if you wanted to be alone with them uh, and like eat him or something. Like, you probably... Yeah, well, I don't know <laughs> that... Uh... But that's strictly necessary. I think he's keeping it very well in check right now. Okay. I was cool. mostly worried about when or if he took damage. Um, that hasn't happened yet, so I'll let it. Cool. Let it so he now. gets he gets dragged back. So you guys have these these three guys there, and so we will say that we are definitely out of combat now, and I will put us back to the nice Italian music. Um, so you guys have yeah. these three guys unconscious, and like around the time that like you you dragged all three. Uh, Ignos would come back and he would just be like, uh, like I said, uh, two of these boys, I, uh, I grew up with them. Uh, I, it's, uh, sad to see them like this. He goes, I, I commend you for not killing them. Um, do what you must. Uh, they acted like it was not them who burned down the shop, but maybe, uh, the man Freddy's, but... I'm sure you have ways of getting information if you need it. So, he's like, "You're welcome to use uh, what's left of my shop as a place to hang out. It is not very secret, but it is out of the way a little bit if need be." So, they were trying to blame another organization, or that was not their organization. No, it is their organization. He was. They were just saying it wasn't us who did it, but like we do know, like it was someone within the Manfredis who did it. But we made sure that they did it at night, so no one was hurt. Um, and you, you know, you should have listened to us. But it was was their organization. It just wasn't necessarily these two Those or three individuals. Yep, exactly. So you guys no. start talking and thinking about what you want to do. I'm gonna use the restroom real quick, but I still have my headset on, so I can hear you. Um, I mean, we can definitely pick into the restaurant and try to do some sort of interrogation to get some more information. Uh, like why they did it and things of that nature. Yeah, I know uh, Redness has a certain um, a certain style when it comes to his interrogation. Um, but I'm I'm good to to deep be a team player for once. Uh, he's kind of stepping out of his uh, comfort zone and just kind of you know letting the team yeah. be a team. Yeah, so I think, uh, well, I don't know what's good here for interrogation. If Ego is good for interrogation, I can interrogate these guys all day. Um, yeah. Uh, I've, otherwise... I've got the interrogation trait, uh, okay. so I can use, I have an edge on Ego or logic checks, which I'd probably use my my uh, Ego, because it's quite a bit higher. But um, yeah. I wonder if... I had a lot of liquid in me. Um, yeah, so it really just depends on what kind of route you guys think you're going to take. Um, so mm -hmm. I will note that two of you can literally read minds, so that could come in handy here, depending on how, how they get. But if you guys want to move yourself, um, and I can move the, the... At least I can move these guys back in here, and you can kind of describe maybe what you're, what you're doing, and we can do some checks based on that. Question. Yeah, so I'll tell you guys what my, my thought is, and then you guys can decide what you want to do. So, like, ego, I've got a five ego. I'm totally down for interrogating these guys if you want me to. 
Um, but if those of you that have better abilities suited for interrogation, that's fine. Uh, one of my other abilities is astral form. Hmm. So I can I can astral walk, um, and if I have the streetwise and the black market access, I might know where these guys came from, and I can just go check out their hideout without having to actually leave hmm. here. Okay. So I'll let um, you get on that. I had a thought in Austin. Let me know if this is doable. Um, uh, I am an inventor. I'm wondering okay. if maybe I could devise, like, I could start, quote unquote, building a, uh, what's the word? Polygraph, like a lie detector. Okay, see if they're lying. Um, as, as a way to, like, freak one or more of these guys out and maybe give whoever does the interrogation edge. Yeah, I like it. I think between being able to read minds and being able to potentially build some sort of a, a polygraph, there's a couple of checks with some edges uh, built in <laughs> there. But yeah, go ahead. And it sounds like there's a couple different plans going on here. So why don't you guys, just one at a time, let me know what you think you want to do, what you're hoping to do to give other people an edge or whatever whatever you're thinking, and we'll, we'll run through it. Um, I will say... I'm not going to, like, each one doesn't have some individual information, so we'll say that you're probably questioning everyone either the same or roughly the same or at the same time, whatever it may be. But we'll treat them all yeah, as kind of like one, one entity. Same, like family? Is that the case? Um, so two of them are the, brothers. Like loved one. Two of them are brothers. You know that the, the two of them that, that okay. were there in front are brothers, and then there's one, like, other goon. But they all, as far as you know... As far as like kind of Ignellis was telling you, and he's kind of it's kind of still sitting outside. He's drinking his his uh, his uh, liquor there, just kind of looking in now, watching you guys. Um, they all work for the Manfredis, hmm. uh, and they're all like they're all kind of part of the quote unquote Manfredi family. Um, and I will note that Ignellis is still out there, so if you guys wanted to ask him any questions, you can too. Um, so awesome. But, do I know anything about the Manfredis? Like, yeah, yeah, you would probably know some. Um, go ahead and give me. Let's let's uh, let's put it to a check. But I will let you do a check because you you probably do know about them. So what would you what would you argue that check? What do you think that's logic? Maybe. Uh, it's like, oh, like so it just says that like I, I know how things are handled on the streets. Who's in charge of various criminal organizations and how to avoid issues with them. Okay, I'm awesome. mainly just curious if, my, if you think my character would know, like where their hideout is. Okay, like so I, I'm me... assuming that's something that we're gonna try and get out of these guys. Probably. But I'm just curious yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, give me one second. Make sure I'm giving you right information here because I do have it. I do know where their hideout is, but I want to make sure I'm looking in the right spot here. Okay, so yeah, that was it. A... Helps. I rolled. Oh no, that's that's. You rolled attack. Rolled. You're good. That's fine. It, the 14 is what I need. It's all oh, the only thing that the attack does differently is also gives you the damage. So it's a 14. Gotcha. Um. Okay. Let me make sure. Da, 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 da. Okay. So the next section of my notes is called the Manfredis. Um, uh, so you would know that it's actually, there was a bit of information that I almost gave earlier that was really good that I was going to give. Um, one second. I only want the good information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, maybe we'll just go to Manfredi because that's what you're <laughs> asking about. Um, so you know that Silvio Manfredi has run the family that bears his surname for decades. Um, he's an old man now. He's one who's cheated death a number of times. This story gets wild, by the way. Story a number of times, and has hair, and his hair has turned white, giving him the code name Silvermane. Over the years, he's fought with Spider-Man, Kingpin, and Cloak and Dagger. And he even took over Hydra for a while and came into direct conflict with Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. After a recent brush with death, Silvermane's head was mounted atop a robotic body that keeps him in some semblance of life. However, this has caused him to retreat from the public sphere as he cannot stroll the streets without people recognizing that he is no longer fully human. Still... Silvermane held court in a restaurant, um, has held court in a restaurant before, just around the corner of Nani's, uh, and he's done that for a number of un untold years before recently fading from public life. 
And that was the name of that restaurant was called Pranos. Um, so if you guys are looking for him or anyone that works for him, that would be a decent place to start. Okay. So cool. what I want to do with just the information that I already have is I'm going to tell these guys that I'll be back, but they need to watch my, my body. Um, and I'm just going to like go to the corner of the room. Oh my God, you're going to cross. I'm going to sit. Yeah, okay, exactly. so let me, let me reveal to where that is. Yeah, okay, go ahead. You're good. And then I'm just going to project my inner self um, over there. But so I have a question for for you, Austin. Um, when Spider-Man, this happens to Spider-Man, the only thing that's left behind is like his spider senses. So if oh, I am not oh, currently yeah. in my body, <laughs> does that mean that that uh, any, anything else that also inhabits my physical form would You're be left behind? Answer. You're going to love this answer. I'm going to say that if you're asking if a certain something breaks out, no. Because as we see in Endgame, when Hulk's persona, or when Bruce gets pushed out of Hulk, Hulk doesn't like rage out within Bruce's body. He stays, Bruce's body just kind of stays, or Hulk's body just kind of stays as it is. And I argue that's a, a similar enough thing that... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, because that's what they're still. Yeah, but yeah, it's a end fractured game, psyche, right? Well, in mean, Endgame, you... <laughs> they had kind of merged. It it wasn't the two separate personalities. Let's uh, let's uh, flip this around. This isn't the first time you've astral formed. What's happened in the past, Brendan? Oh, God, I don't know. Uh, right? I, really... I guess I, I don't even leave it up to you because I think it could go either way. I think that you are. Have we said what it is? Can I say what it is? Is that still a secret? Are we not using the S word here? Or can I... I mean, you I mean, can say we, it. You we want. all know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Like, the symbiote, I don't know if it's a part of you enough to, like, be pushed out of you when you go into this astral form. Like, is its, is its astral form being brought with you? Like, is it so... Like, is are you guys attached at the soul level to where no, you're also bringing its astral form so. with you? I mean, so no? that, I guess that's not how Venom is. I don't think oh, we've never seen yeah, so Venom get astral form. If, like, you know, well, we but have we seen Eddie Brock be unconscious <laughs> and Venom still acting? I don't think so. I think if they're both unconscious, they're both unconscious. I just don't well, think that I, he really lets you become unconscious except for maybe okay. potentially by magical means. So I think this is a... Uh, this is new, Isn't new canon magic? that we're establishing for our specific universe, the one, uh, the 1697 universe. By the way, I'd say that yes, astral projection goes beyond just the physical realm, and so therefore, a symbiote being a physical entity would be jetted from that person's. I think maybe there's you do it. There's form. like two astral forms, like you can see the symbiote kind of being with you, maybe. Okay. I mean, yeah. So I'm, I'm fine. I don't know. It's up to. Right I think it's. I think it's ultimately up to I you. I don't think it is. <laughs> no, I, I, I like it. Tell me how it works in this universe. Well, um, you know the trailer at the end of Spider-Man where like they have that little bit of venom in that different uh -huh. universe. Yeah. I feel like that. If that is a reality, then I still don't see why your astral form can do the same thing. Yeah, because well, like venom is its own. It's its own conscious. The symbiote is conscious and can act on its own. Like the, the symbiote could also leave my body if it wanted to. That's true. So I don't think it would be tethered to me if I'm not unconscious. But I think it could I'm be not tethered to my you. body. Is it your consciousness that's tying it to you? No, I mean I think the symbiotes are well, physically tied to you. Yeah, so well, and, tied and, you, and also, to but you've also been but, tied to him for th like a thousand years or something. Like at that point, like yeah, you guys I, might I be so close. I mean, emotionally, yeah, but physically, no, because like Venom does, do, like he doesn't he like force Eddie to do shit like That's that true. he doesn't want to. I think so. because it's magic, when you are casting the spell that causes the astral form, there is a way for you to choose to bring that you soul with you. Because you can also push other beings out, like canonically, like astral form mm -hmm. is like you know you could push other people out of their astral form. So I think you could leave the symbiote in your body, which seems like a bad idea because he's just going to do whatever he wants. Or you could also bring him with you. Because my thought process is that it's much safer as a wizard if I have a monstrous creature guarding my body at all times. Yeah, I think that you guys are probably but, close enough at this point. Like, he's not trying to do things that you don't want that you might be able to just say, like, 
I'll be back, like, and just stay here guarding my body. Like, I think mm -hmm. that would be valid. I, Like a sentry mode. I think that's cool. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to astral project, and I'm going to leave behind... Oh, no, you the... can't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, uh, never mind then. Uh, no, you're good. Oh. Uh, it's in the south. I mean, there's not... Uh, I mean, you could go down there if you want to bring your character. Actually, I don't know if there's a way. I guess you can't really bring your character. I should have made an astral projection. Double but I, I think what I'm going to do is... There you go. I'm there's your astral projection. warn everybody else. I'm going to warn everybody else. Uh, and be like, well, I think that I'm going to have to go and investigate this uh, other restaurant's He's like, it would be better if my physical form were not present. But that means you're going to have to meet someone, and they may not be what you expect. Prepare yourselves. It shouldn't harm you. We've had a conversation about this beforehand. Uh, well, I'll, I'll let you talk to, to them. Um, and so he's going to, like, like I said, cross his legs and, like, you know, hold, pull his hands out and kind of own. Um, you know, like, kind of get into that, and then and then astral project. But in doing so, um, like my, the, there's gonna be like a a sludge or slime that like kind of like starts to ooze out of just of pores on my body and kind of cover <laughs> me up and just like like become sand this rose. other creature. Yeah, like Egyptian sand. Uh, yeah, yeah, Egyptian. a little bit, a little, yeah, a little bit like that. Oh, uh, I, do, I just, hate sand. Course. It's coarse, it's coarse, and irritable. Gets ah, everywhere. look at Gets him! Everywhere. Ah, it's so cool. And so, uh, and so, uh, pride will appear, oh, wow. and uh, the devil. Play that song. Yeah, and they sound a little bit different than I do. So we'll see if this works. Anyway. I gave you another character to be your other one too, that, and put some random okay, emotes cool. on him. So let's see. Why don't we play it? Hang on, it makes sense. Are you ready? Uh huh. Yeah. The transformation is a nasty bit of business. Whoa. We are one called Pride. That's Brenda, Brenda Light's a little bit like feminine robot. I like it. Oh, I like it. That's yeah. just funny. It's it's very space. It's very. It doesn't like, sound like the one that you tested with earlier. That's good. But it almost sounds feminine robot-y. We are very, very hungry. Okay, yeah, I'm I hope you all interrogation does not go much longer. Oh god. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna let you guys react to that. While uh, uh, uh it is uh, uh what was the Pride. Uh no, the restaurant owner. What was uh, his name Ignellis. again? Ignos, is he here with us? Uh, so he's still kind of just, he like went back and sat back down and is kind of watching you guys from outside where this uh, blue circle is. Okay. So yeah, he, he's still just, he watches, he watches him transform and you kind of see his hands like kind of go tight knuckle, like, you know, like white knuckling on his chair, but then he kind of relaxes again because he's been in New York a long time and crazier shit has happened. I don't think I was using the right one. I don't think, I think so. I just clicked on something else. Uh, okay. Try, well, try again, start. if you want to. We are very, Same. very hungry. Is it over? <laughs> that part, dude. <laughs> Is it okay? <laughs> just wanted to make sure. Okay. It was really good. I, I don't know what it makes it sound just the slightest bit feminine, but it does sound like a like a female symbiote, which maybe. Yeah, it is. It is runic sorceress. Sorceress, yeah, that makes sense. If for real, it makes me think of Alien. Like it's yeah. a fucking xenomorph. Yeah. <laughs> if they could talk. That's cool. That's where we need to be. Alright. Uh, does anybody say anything? For pride? Uh, yes, I, I dictate that uh, these three hostages are to be uh, kept alive for interrogation. I'll make that clear. Interrogation. Your races are evolved beyond the need for interrogation. I understand. <laughs> we are on the same page. Yeah, this Italian dude is kind of a little bit Christmassy on me. I don't know why, but I'm kind of vibing with it. 
Uh, but uh, so so leaving Pride in charge, Nasser will fly to this other location. Did you say it was on the map? Yeah, it's way south, like where you guys started, and then to the west. Okay. So is it like a? It's like a restaurant that's like currently being used, like. Um. So they've used it as a church before. So let me. Let me, uh, before you, yeah, I'll let you know if you see anything there. Give me a sec. Okay, so, like, as you're, knows yeah, as you're, the, as you're coming to the front door, you see a, a sign on the front door, and it's, like, boarded up, and the sign on the front says, SOLD! MOVING SOON TO NEW LOCATION, in all caps. Oh. Um, and if you're, like, kind of on your way down, like, as you were flying, I don't know if you took the main streets or if you just flew through buildings, but if you took the main streets, you would notice that it kind of looked like maybe some of the other other buildings were in a, in a similar set of uh, disarray. Like they had been boarded up. Some had, had said moved. Some of them didn't, but kind of looked like they had. So maybe the people weren't as vocal about moving. Um, but it does look like uh, like the inside of this Prano's restaurant is kind of kind of kind of bare bones right now. There's not really anything. Okay. So going if I go on inside it. and look around, there's nothing inside. Yeah, nothing, nothing of note. I mean, you could uh, roll a vigilance check to see if anything sticks out to you, or if you have another check that you think would be more applicable for the situation. Marvel die. Wow, you got Jesus a six, what? six one six. That's a fucking uh, the max result on a yeah, random Yeah, I want to make check. sure. Yeah, what's that? That's called a. <laughs> Give him everything. Uh, what is that called? I was gonna say I have to. I have number. to see. The, have that's to an see ultimate fantastic. The watcher, right? I like. I like. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, I'm just like. Holy else shit! Is here. A the giant. All right, let me figure out what you're gonna get because I'm. Mean, you just searched the fucking piss out of this place. You've so. had an epiphany. <laughs> you, you go in. Wait, how is Ultron involved in this thing? What? There's <laughs> a man with a giant head watching us. So. God, I don't even know what to give you here. Actually, I kind of do. So you... I'm a boss. It's directly behind us. Well, yeah, well, so you're you're kind of looking around, uh, trying to see if you find anything, and in the trash, you find a ripped up, like, uh, I don't want to say like a, like, a plan, like a building plan, like a blueprint type thing, but something similar to it, but like on a normal 8x12 that's kind of been printed off, it looks like, but it's kind of torn up. But it almost looks so, like some sort of rudimentary like put together portal and the only reason that you really get that together is because it looks like some sort of maybe a little bit of magic maybe a little bit of technology in there but even with a fantastic success it's so like ripped up and partial that like all you can really get is like some some sort of portal design has been implemented there which really just doesn't track with anything that you've learned thus far. It really just doesn't make any sense. If I say, this really doesn't track with anything that we've learned so far. <laughs> You're just talking to yourself, but I like it. Right. I am. That's his okay. internal uh, monologue. Let's, so I went and did this thing, so let's go back to what everybody else is doing. Um, no, actually, I just want to keep watching you. Don't act like you're the okay. DM. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. All right, so yeah, you guys got these guys. You don't really know what uh, 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 Nasor was able to find over there. You know that this symbiote's kind of just sitting in the corner, Jay chilling, kind of looking like he's ready to fucking eat, but he's not. Um, so you guys are able to kind of interrogate these guys. If you have a check that you want to make against them, ask them some questions, see if you can get some answers. Use some mind reading powers, whatever you want to do. Just uh, let me know, and we'll make some appropriate checks and let the dice tell a story here. Um, I'm gonna be making a help action. Um, okay. With the polygraph, yeah. So gives machine, yeah. Gives someone that's, an that's edge. That's that, that giving them edge. Okay. Um, so yeah, I imagine the, you're like, in, sake, yeah. like building, you know, with your like eternal magic type thing that you got building this machine, and maybe setting it up behind all three of them, and like putting some sensors and shit on them behind them um, and then letting... Even if it doesn't do anything, I'm just trying yeah. to like get into their head. And letting Water Bear, who doesn't speak, but's got crazy telepathy powers, and Red Mist, who's not all in his right mind, ask some questions. So what do you what do you think you two would, would ask 
And in what way are you trying to extract the information? Where is Rachel? Oh, mm-hmm. Where is she? I turn to Red uh, Mist and show an image of like a good cop and a bad cop, and I do a question mark. <laughs> You guys can actually talk to each other because you both have, I mean, you could talk with anyone if you want, but yeah, you do have the telepathy thing. So you could just be asking horrible, doing horrible, horrible things, and like craftsmen probably wouldn't have any idea. He's just like, it looks like they're lying. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got his little machine that he's got, and it shows, you know, whether or not they're good or bad. And then we're just like depriving these men of their psyches, just draining oh, yeah, them of oh, their well-being. mental fortitude. Yeah, just the opposite of a of a you know a counselor. But uh, I, mean, I do I... have an edge on any sort of interrogation role that we make. Yeah, I mean, what you what you want to you gotta gotta ask questions in interrogation. Can't just say you're interrog. I mean, I guess you could just like stab them a bunch of times and be like, they didn't give me anything. <laughs> an interesting way of interrogation. This you one's broken. Uh, so, and yeah, we don't know you're... the stuff that uh, Brendan is trying to. Uh, yeah, you don't know what information so... Brendan's gained necessarily. Yeah. So you're, I mean, you're again, you were here to find out why the fires happened, and you got told that it was. Ignella said it was the Manfredis, and these guys came and attacked. It said they were the Man- Manfredis, but you know, said that it wasn't them who did it necessarily; it was someone else. So that's about okay. the information that you have. Uh, then let's just can... start with basics. You know, yeah. Who did start the fires? <laughs> if it wasn't you, who else could it have been? First okay. question. And so how are you? Are you saying that out loud? Are you trying to do some sort of, like, ask them and then read their minds? What do you, what kind of check do you think you want to make here? What's, what's the, what's the tactic or tone on this one? Well, I've been probing their minds since they, you know, came into the shop. And so I've just been trying to, like, find information, see what I could, see what I can ascertain. Um, I do, I think I do have to make a check to, like, make this link with someone that's not, like, wanting me there. Okay, go ahead and uh, Um, put that power into the chat real quick so we could look at it. Okay. Telepathic link. I think uh, Water Bear also has the same power. Okay, so um, to f- okay, so about three quarters of the way down, it says to force a telepathic link, the character can make a logic check against the target's vigilance defense. On a failure, the character cannot attempt to communicate with the target in this way for the rest of the day. So I would argue you could probably do that three times because you have three different people you could do it on, but two of them are going to have more information than one of them. Um, And uh, on a success, the character can communicate with this target for one round. So I would let you ask, like, basically a question on that. And on a fantastic success, the target can shut the character out for the rest of the day. But there's no distance to it. This guy could be anywhere. uh, I think it's a line of sight type thing, yeah. Is it? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they have, must have met or seen the person. I guess not necessarily. I guess you that could. have seen. But yeah. Past tense. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, I'm I gonna, think oh, telepathic link just allows that. you to get a link with them. I think there's powers after that. Like, I think telepathic link just allows you. Uh, let's see. I don't know what you're allowed to do with that. Because there's other powers that allow you to like ask them questions right i think that's what you have right sarah like you have a power that like after you have reading yeah there's like a yeah mind reading so telepathic you have to make a telepathic link with someone and then you can do mind reading so dylan i don't know you have a power called interrogation it's a trait trait interrogation the character knows how to ask the right questions in the right way they have an edge on ego. Okay, so I would give you, like, basically two edges if you made a telepathic link and then tried to interrogate them, but you don't necessarily have the power to read their minds because that's, like, a separate power. Does that make sense? That makes sense, yeah. So, like, you can, like, make I'll a link it. with them so you can, like, kind of feel what they're feeling maybe, 
but you can't like directly read their thoughts necessarily if they don't want to. But we could start with uh, you doing a logic check against the target's vigilance. And okay, uh, and I do want to do uh, an extra thing. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love to teleport up to a building, uh, like the top of one, and then jump off, and then teleport out, and just interrogate them as we're falling. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm thinking uh, like that Captain that America Civil good. War, where they throw uh, Stillwell off the building, and Bucky or uh, a can, Falcon catches him. Can you yeah, take people yeah, with your okay. teleportation? It doesn't say specifically. Uh, I would say you don't have really. to take him to. Uh, I'll, I'll allow it. I'll, it's it's a flavor. You're not you're not necessarily. Y'all might not let you do it in combat, but as a as a thing it's right here, cool you could yeah do. you could flavor it. Yeah, you're you're a superhero. Fucking. Okay. I imagine he doesn't necessarily, or maybe he does. I don't know. Mm. It is tough because your your teleporting is like ripping yourself to a red mist. Yeah, and he doesn't have that's kind of where he I was... doesn't have a healing power necessarily. Oh, you try, yeah. you try it once point. and they just die. <laughs> it's just insta kill. It's like, uh oh, you found your insta kill power. <laughs> that that might just let the other ones be like, okay, yeah, you fucking win. <laughs> if you want to like take him, like control. if you want to walk one of them to the top of a building and like threaten them or something, like, I guess you already have double edge on this, so you probably like you you probably don't need to necessarily. We're going all out. Yeah, okay. this is my first big assignment. I'm not going. I'm not. I'm not half yeah. All right. So yeah, if you want to like walk outside and like carry one of them with you, and then like throw them off the building, and before they hit the ground, teleport to the ground and like catch them or something to freak them the fuck out, like you can. It does take okay, a little so bit of time though, so you're gonna take one of them and do that. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. I'll start with one, and if I don't get anything, I'll go for the other. But I'll okay. let him know that. It's he doesn't okay. give me what I want. I can always go to the others. All right. So I imagine like you take like one of these guys outside. I'm going to move you for you. So now all that's left is the uh, uh, polygraph machine and water bear. So water bear, what do you think you're going to do here? Do you want to try to do a telepathic link and do some mind reading and ask some questions? Yes. Cool. All right. I would. So the telepathic link already in chat. So that's going to be a logic check against the target's vigilance defense. So their vigilance defense is uh, vigilance is one, so it's eleven. You hit a sixteen, so you are able to force the telepathic link with someone. So you've forced your way into their mind. You know they they show it in lots of movies and stuff. You've you've dug your way into their mind and successfully done it. Brendan, I'm immediately brought to like Aragon I, and Justin, I guess. Aragon, where there's like, you know, two wizards fighting each other to like try to break into each other's mind. It's so cool. Uh, Peloni did a great job visualizing that. Um, so Water Bear, you successfully break into the mind of this guy. So now you have your mind reading, I believe, if you want. Mm -hmm. um, and that, go, I'll, I'll put that in chat for you just because I'm already on your page. So the character can read the thoughts of a single person with whom they've established a telepathic link. This requires do a logic to, check. Do I need to... Sorry. Um, I would argue that it says that they've already established a telepathic link with, and this requires a logic check against the target's... Oh, logic defense. Okay, so yeah, it's going to be another roll. Um, so go ahead and give me another uh, logic check. You don't have to do the attack one. You can just click on logic. Um, well, I'm going to ask, um, do I need to state in advance who I created the, created the link with? Um, yeah, I mean, it's green or orange. You're going to get the same information from both, probably. But yeah, if you want to okay. be specific here, that works. Okay. Um, and then you said just a normal logic check? Mm-hmm. It's only a T and 10. They only have a, they have a zero logic, so their defense is just a 10. So as long as you can beat a 10. 15. A fantastic success, actually, because... Or uh, it's not fantastic. Fantastic is the best. No, it is. Yeah, ultimate fantastic is the best. You got a fantastic because you rolled a marble. Die. I love this fantastic and ultimate fantastic and it's great. Fantastic. It's just so uh, like critical is cool, but like an ultimate fantastic, that's sick. You got to roll perfect on three die. Um, Mind you, like a like Starbucks order drinking. So you are like 
Like, you are reading the fuck out of his mind. Like, you got everything. Well, I'm, you're I'm you're reading, reading probably so too much. Hard. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Like, you you know this man right now. So, you can ask a question, and you'll probably, as far as he knows, like, you're not going to gain any information that he doesn't know, but you could probably ask two questions here and get exact answers on what what he's thinking and what he's feeling. Um, I asked who he works for. Okay. And he go and and he he even says out loud. He's like, he's like, I told you. Uh, 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 what's my word again? Uh, Gabagool. 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 That's the Gabagool. He was like, told you. Uh, we work for the Manfredis. And you read his mind, and that's that's uh, absolutely the truth. He does. They, these the guys truth? definitely okay. do work for the Manfredis. The polygraph also confirms this thing. Can I can I uh, suggest a, a question? Absolutely. You don't have to take it. We're just all just mind links, so I'm thinking. Um, what's your deal? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? Why are you burning down this old man's place? It just it covers a lot of area. But I, potential, especially I, I, with the my fantastic. second my second question I asked, who hurt you? Who hurt you? <laughs> he goes, it was really good. He goes, it was my father. <laughs> he goes. He goes. I never. I never wanted to burn down this place. I liked this place. I like Ignelis. He's a good guy. And he looks over to him, and he's the kind of Ignelis is kind of watching him, and he goes, like I said, you should have listened. And when he says you should have listened, you kind of get a little bit more in his head. You kind of, you kind of get this this feeling here. So you 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 feel like uh, he knows that they've been, like the Manfredi family has been trying to pressure local businesses and tenants to vacate their buildings, and surrender them, to the Magia, which is like the name of the gang. And so far, they've only had moderate success, and that's mostly due to the stubbornness of some of the long-term fixtures in this area like Ignellis. Um, and because of that, they decided to target Nandis and leaned on Ignellis hard. And they kind of believed that uh, this place was a keystone business on the street. So if it were to banish, everyone else who was resisting would probably uh, go down with them. Um, but truly, as far as uh, this guy knows, which is one of the brothers, one of the Laras, uh, as far as they know, uh, it just this all seems like a real estate play that their bosses wanted to make. They don't necessarily know why it's right here or why now. Uh, they truly, even with this fantastic success, they really just know that they were told to make it happen. And like they said earlier, they even tried to kind of stick up for 90s. It's a place that they've eaten it since they were kids, uh, but their bosses really didn't want to hear it. They were just told, make it happen, make this place yours. And so that's kind of how it all went down. Um, so we'll jump back here around this time. So you've gotten some really solid information. Um, uh, uh, Nasor has found that Pranos has uh, been, uh, you know, abandoned. It looks like there's a bunch of other buildings on the block that have been abandoned too. And uh, Red Mist has taken one last guy to the top of a building. And is a uh, looks like he's about to throw him off. So we'll we'll probably end the session after Red Mist's a uh, little little bit of a little bit of talking here. Whatever whatever you got going on. Again, you probably unless Water Bear finds it necessary to share this information with you, you via telepathic link, you probably don't really know the information that that, that she just learned. So okay, and so it's kind of like this uh, this uh, was a dramatic irony of the end of the episode uh, because we just learned all the expedi ex exposition for like the next episode and we're all ready and we're all hyped up because we know that there's all this cool stuff that's you know mm -hmm. going to link into other people mm -hmm. this whole universe um, but then we're we just cut right back to the simplicity of the of the superhero experience the inter interrogation yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah and we all know it you know tried and true uh, it's just one man hurting another because uh, they're both Christ. feeling bad about themselves. Chaotic evil. 
Yeah, and and then I think it's just you know it fades to black into the the screams into the cosmos. <laughs> All right, perfect. Does anybody have like at the end of the episode kind of happens? Does anyone have anything last minute they want to do here as the episode kind of ends, where you feel like you've gained all the information you can gain via astral form uh, interrogation and straight up fear factor I haven't got to introduce my animal companion that's true who that right. or what is your animal companion uh, it's going to be um, a large breed mutt probably primarily Irish wolfhound um, his name is Scram I found him on my first day in New York City Hell yeah, I love it. You find me a picture of that, or if you need me to mid-journey it. Oh, it's here in the Discord. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, he's in the Omni channel. Uh, okay, I will get him added. Let me put him on stream real quick. Look at it. Wonderful. We love him. Excellent. So Scram mm -hmm. is there too. How how has so Scram has been here the whole time? How has Scram reacted <laughs> to all the chaos that's happened? Has he just been in that same pose, just kind of? Happy and Jay chilling. Yeah, he's been just kind of um, ambivalent of everything, just hanging out, um, getting used to the the noise and the chaos, the powers. Seems well adjusted. Um, he prepares to fight in the next round. Awesome, love it. It's cool. It's a pupper that does well on Fourth of July. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, okay. Custom. Well, we will end there with some information found and potentially uh, a direction to go. Um, there's some, uh, maybe some more buildings to investigate and some people to talk to. Um, and we'll, we'll see if there's maybe a, a deeper story going on here with this apparent just real estate grab for Little Italy. But I appreciate it. Stream, thanks for hanging out. Hello, YouTube. We go big. You know, I've looked online. I couldn't find anyone else playing this game on YouTube. So we might be one of the first. So hope everyone appreciated it. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Wow, what a show. A Thank you, Six Semper Tyrannosaurus. I swear I know who you are. We just don't know who you are. But the way that you speak just makes it think like we're like on a personal level. And I appreciate that. All right. Enjoy the outro. It's me being scared. What? Oh, he's right there. Oh. Oh, I got a he's photo. here, he's I got here, a he's here. Crucifix, crucifix, fuck off. Fuck off, get get out of here. Oh, ah! fuck. Ah, got a picture of it! I got it, oh, I got it, I got it. Fuck oh, ass! Oh my god! Holy Joseph White does not like Smash Mouth. And he's like, what? What? What is that thing? <laughs> and then he cut oh, off. nice. My, my ears. <laughs> and got him. They're bleeding. Not good. Fun <laughs> truce for a moment. <clears throat> just gotta, just gotta clear my throat. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <clears throat> That's a fucking amazing. <laughs> oh my god. This nigga with this SPR, who do you think you are, my nigga? Oh, you are. Good job, man. Shut your like, bitch ass up. <laughs> man, <laughs> man, that's a L. Man, this nigga is spam. Why? Shut your bitch ass up. I literally got on y'all every time I see y'all. Shut the fuck up, bitch. No grannies, damn. <laughs> Those shadow carja scum are going to pay for what they did to Ursa. That was Geralt. <laughs>